All right, Jacqueline, we're live. Okay, great. Thank you, Patrick. Uh, Chair Harkey, whenever you're yep. ready to start, I think we're ready to go. All righty. This is the call to order for the German Village Commission meeting. This today is Tuesday, May 4th. It is 4.01 p.m. We are here via virtual hearing. The next commission uh, monthly business meeting will be 12 noon, Tuesday, May 18th, 2021. Uh, again, via the WebEx virtual hearing meeting. Uh, the next commission hearing will be 4 p.m. on Tuesday, June 1st, 2021. Uh, scheduled to be done via WebEx as a virtual hearing. We move on to swearing in of staff. So, staff, you please raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Jacqueline Lehman, Assistant Historic Preservation Officer. Thank you, Jacqueline. I will go ahead and do an introduction of commissioners present. Uh, Commissioner Panzer. Present. Commissioner Thiel. Here. Commissioner Durst. Present. Commissioner Ferial. I'm here. Commissioner McCoy is not in attendance today. And don't believe Brent is here either. All right. Uh, and I'm Chair Harkey. We'll go ahead and move on to the minutes from Tuesday, April 6, 2021. Is there a motion on the minutes? I move to approve the minutes. Second. All right, we'll give the second to Commissioner Thiel. Uh, are any questions on the motion? Uh, are there any objections to the motion? Hearing none, we will uh, we'll approve. Just to let you know, I'm here, Commissioner or Mr. Chair. Thank you, Commissioner Foley. All right. Uh, so here, no uh, objections. Uh, the minutes have been approved. We'll move on to items for public forum. Jacqueline, any items for public forum? No items for public forum. All right, uh, we'll move to the staff approval list. Mr. Chairman, I need to, uh, this is Commissioner Ferial. I need to abstain from GV 2105 dash o two o seven seventy eight ah. south sixth street i'm going to recuse myself from gv dash two one dash zero five dash zero zero three three one three jackson street Are there any other recusals? I move that we ratify the staff approvals. Is there a second? Second. Any questions on the motion? Uh, if there are no objections, hearing no objections, uh, motion passes. Uh, we'll move on to the application for certificates of appropriateness. Uh, item one is GV-21-05-026-650 South 3rd Street. Looking for an applicant for 650 South 3rd Street. Mr. Chair, if I could, I, I need to recuse myself. This is a client. Uh, thank you, Commissioner Foley. Hi, uh, Eric Zerman, attorney for the applicant. All right. Uh, would you please raise your right hand? Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. All right, and please state your name for the record. My name is Eric Zartman from the law firm of Underhill and Hodge. Thank you very much. Uh, Jacqueline. Okay, this application is proposing a change of use from a restaurant to retail. The property is currently zoned R2F. The council variance is requested to permit, to permit a C1 commercial uses within the R2F district. 
The property most recently operated as a coffee shop and would now be used as retail for the sale of bath and body care products. No demolition, exterior remodeling, or additions are proposed. At the April 20th business meeting, the commission asked if any new parking variances will be required with the change of use or if the prior parking variance will carry over. The applicant has confirmed no parking variance is necessary for their application, citing the relevant code section 3312.03C and noting that in the future, if the property was changed back to a C1 restaurant, that would likely require a new parking variance as the parking demand would be more than currently proposed, more than the currently proposed retail use. So staff does recommend approval of the application as submitted, and the basis for that recommendation is that the work is consistent with the standards for alteration. All right. Uh, does the applicant have anything else to add? Um, no, but I'm happy to answer any questions the commission might have. Uh, thank you. All right, questions, comments from the commission. Mr. Chairman, I have a motion on agenda item number one, TV 20. I'm sorry, I'm stepping on somebody, I think. Oh, go ahead, Commissioner Panzer. Okay, uh, motion on. Agenda item number one, GB 2105026650 South 3rd Street to apply or to recommend approval of the variance. Second. We'll give that second to Commissioner Durst. Are there any questions on the motion? We'll go ahead and take the vote. Commissioner Panzer? Aye. Commissioner Durst? Aye. Commissioner Thiel? Aye. Commissioner Farrell? Aye. Commissioner Foley? He recused himself. Recused himself, my bad. Uh, chair votes aye as well. Ayes have it. Motion passes. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. All right, we'll move on to item number two, GV-21-05-027-873 South 3rd Street. Looking for an applicant from 873rd South 3rd Street. Here. Uh, applicant, please raise your right hand. Uh, you tell, swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, about the truth. Thank you. And please take your for the record. Tyler Graham. Thank you very much. Jacqueline. Hey, this application is proposing to remove an overgrown hawthorn at the rear right of the lot. The tree is in severe decline, affecting neighboring fences, the HVAC unit, and the home foundation. The applicant would like to replace this tree with a redbud tree. Uh, based on the submitted documentation, including an arborist letter and photos, the tree does appear to be in decline, and staff recommends approval of the application as submitted, uh, noting that the basis of that is that the work proposed work is consistent with the standards of alteration. Does the applicant have anything else to add? No. All right. Questions, comments from the commission? Mr. Chairman, I have a motion on agenda item number two, application GV21-05-027873 South 3rd Street. To approve the motion as or approve the application as submitted. Second. Are there any questions on the motion? All right, we'll go ahead and take the vote. Commissioner Panzer? Aye. Commissioner uh, Durst? Aye. Commissioner Thiel? Aye. Commissioner Ferriel? Aye. Commissioner Foley? Aye. Uh, chair votes aye as well. Ayes have it. Motion passes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Moving on to item number three, GV-21-05-028, uh, Beck Place, Beck Street Condominiums, a uh, whole bunch of numbers there. Do we have an applicant here for the Beck Street Condominium? Yeah, Randall Kennedy. All right, Ms. Kennedy, uh, if you please raise your right hand. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. Yes, yes, I do. And please state your name for the record. It's Randall, R-A-N-D-A-L, Kennedy, K-E-N-N-E-D-Y. Thank you very much, Mr. Kennedy. Jacqueline. Sure. 
This application is proposing to retain the existing no outlet sign. Uh, the sign is 18 inches in width, 24 inches in length, with a metal stick into the soil at front yard area, and it has a total height of 48 inches. The sign reads private community, residents, and guests only, no outlet. The applicant would like to retain the sign due to excessive random entry, trespassing, and attempts to burglarize cars and property, leaving items in the private driveway, driving in or parking in the Disney spots, and having to call the tow company to remove strangers', strangers cars, and over confusion that the private driveway is an alley. So at the April 20th GBC business meeting, the commission requested additional photos showing the driveway area and they painted lettering. The applicant has submitted those additional photos and the staff has also found photos of the driveway area from 2005 uh, just showing parking lines. Google Earth imagery shows painted signage on the asphalt driveway to have been added sometime between 2017 and 2019. The current metal sign uh, does appear to be small and professionally completed. Uh, moving the location of the sign back a few feet uh, would help to reduce the visual impact near the sidewalk. So staff does recommend approving the application with the condition that the sign is re relocated slightly away from the sidewalk area to reduce that visual impact. And that is based on the standards for site improvements, specifically letter A. Thank you, Jacqueline. Mr. Candy, do you have anything else to add? Um, no, I think she got it. Okay. My Any only questions question would be just if you could specifically tell us how far to move it back if you approve. That would be helpful. Uh, any questions, comments from the commission? I I've got two questions. Um, first question is: Is there are are there? Sorry, is there one or are there two sign? Two of these signs, one on either side of the driveway. There's only one standing sign, and then there is lettering on the driveway itself to the left, which should be in one of the pictures I sent last week. I sent a picture of. Um, Looking straight from Cedar Alley, but there's only I mean, one. That, while, while I'm sympathetic to the issues at hand, I've got a real problem with that sign on the on the street. And as far as this application goes, this this would represent the second sign on the same face of a building as as would be the case with a business where we don't allow, uh, we typically don't allow two facing signs in the same direction. Our preference would be to paint over the driveway sign because this is the only sign that cars can see. And we do have cars entering directly from Cedar because our um, driveway is um, straight into there. Um, so our preference would be if you want one, we would really prefer to keep the standing sign and move it back. That, that would be my preference as well, but it's not my application, so. Was there a second question you had, Commissioner Panzer? No, no. The, fir the first one was yeah. uh, was whether there was one or two of these, and I just couldn't remember. I remember another situation where there were two of them, different property. Um, gotcha. The other thing was to state that that really have two signs that two separate signs that were put up here uh, that were um, installed without a COA, and my belief that there should only be one. The applicant, um, I think. To be perfectly frank, wisely chose the, the one that I think I agree would do the most good, and is also has the, the dual advantage of being the the less unsightly of the two. Okay. Pictures of the other ones. Yeah, there should be one straight from um, Cedar Alley that I spent last week. I'm going to bring them up in a second, and for some reason, Bach just would not accept the revised materials. So just give me one moment. Well, Jack, let's pull that up. Are there any other questions from the commission or comments? So, is the purpose of the sign really to prevent burglaries? Does that do you have any realistic hope that it will do that? Well, I think the primary reason is we have a lot of cars entering. I mean, once this picture comes up, you'll kind of see we look like we're actually Cedar Alley. So, if you're coming down Cedar Alley North, um, our driveway is directly in front of that. So we have cars just coming in thinking that we're a street and um, we have cars coming in parking in our spots. And then we also have people, um, which the people, I don't know if you're familiar with our, we have a building in the front and the back. When there's people in the back, those tenants get very concerned because there's just no, you know, it's very private back there and there's no visibility. 
So number one, we're trying to keep the cars off and number two, as many people as possible, especially for the people in the back. Um, where there's just no visibility when people are back there and when they come out of their apartments or get out of their cars, um, they view it as a safety issue. That makes I think more that, sense. So I, I think the applicant, Mr. Candy, as you stated, you'd be, you'd be willing to have the sign and paint over what's on the blacktop uh, from the commission. Is there a distance back that would be acceptable? We Say that again, Anthony. If you go back to that picture, we could have back, could put it back where the um, AP, so, ADP sign is. So, Commissioner Thiel, at the beginning of the, the uh, application, the applicant asked if we can identify how far back, give them a dimension, oh. location. So, the, the white lettering there, the, the private residence that's kind of worn off, that would all get painted over. The sign on the right would get pushed back. The question is, is it exactly the ADT sign? Does it need to go back further? What's that? What's that guidance for the applicant here? We do want people from this view to see it because this is straight. I was actually standing in Cedar Alley across the street. This is where most of the cars come in. I'd say two feet back would be fine. Yeah, I, I agree. That's exactly what I was thinking. That couple of feet. That's all. Okay, two feet. Okay, thank you. All right, so Mr. Candy, would you like to amend your application uh, to, as you stated, to paint over the the white lettering on the on the drive, take okay. the existing sign on the right, and push it back two feet? Certainly will. Okay. And we'll go through this process next month for that. No, no, no. Okay. It, that's just amending the current application on the table, and the the uh, application the certificate will be written as such. Okay, perfect. I appreciate it. All right, if there's no further questions, is there a motion? Sure. On agenda item number three, I'd like to make a motion on agenda item number three, GV21-05-028, Beck Place 239A, 239B, 241, 243, 245A, 245B, at East Beck Street, the Beck Place condominiums, um, to approve the application as amended to include moving the uh, existing standing sign back, back approximately two feet from the uh, Beck Street right of way, uh, from the from the, the Beck Street sidewalk, I should say, and to um, use asphalt coating, appropriate uh, asphalt coating to cover over the sign that is on the asphalt paving. Second. All right, we'll give that to Commissioner Thiel. Are there any questions on the motion? Go ahead and take the vote, Commissioner Panzer. Aye. Commissioner Durst. Aye. Commissioner Thiel. Aye. Commissioner Ferriel. Aye. Commissioner Foley. Aye. Chair votes aye as well. Ayes have it. Motion passes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a good day. All right. Uh, moving on to agenda item number four, which would be GV-21-05-029, 693 City Park Avenue. Is there an application for 693 City Park Avenue? I'm here. All right. Uh, I heard your voice. I'm looking for your face. Uh, if you can speak up one more time. Okay. Todd, uh, with Renovation uh, Unlimited. I see you now, Mr. Schmidt. Please raise your right okay. hand. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole oh. truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. And please state your name for the record. Todd Schmidt with Renovation Unlimited. Thank you, Mr. Schmidt. All right, Jacqueline. This application is proposing to install an outdoor mini split condenser on a rear addition, uh, which would be centered on a flat membrane roof. The applicant would like to run the condenser line along the trim in lieu of a slate roof breach. And the applicant would also like to replace 20 or so damaged slate tiles with used slate to match the existing slate roof. So at the April 20th business meeting, the commission noted that condensers are typically okay, but visual impacts should be avoided. Uh, the commission asked whether the condenser could be mounted on a wall or on the ground to, uh, to avoid that visual impact. The commission requested an aerial image showing the proposed condenser location. And the applicant has submitted additional marked photos and an aerial. The proposed location of the condenser may be visible from the street, and staff recommends the condenser be located farther away from the street or on the ground or wall area as recommended by the commission uh, to prevent the condenser from being visible from the right of way. 
So staff does recommend the application with the condition that the condenser not be visible from the public right away. And that is based on the standards for alteration, specifically number nine. All right, Mr. Schmidt, do you have anything else to add? Um, we did uh, locate it uh, 10 feet in from the edge of the roof. And then I had one of my employees actually stand where the unit was going to go. So you could see that it's not visible. The unit itself is only about 24 inches tall. And that did mark there on the flat roof where it was going as well. All right, looks like that that photo you're talking about the person standing there. There you go. <laughs> there you, go. you can see his head there. Yeah. And then when you get down the street further down Stimmel further look back, that's about the most you can see of him. And you can see it in the photo there, you can only see him about uh, right below his waist up. So again, it's not visible. I think pages then, 20. Um, Go ahead. 26 and, the, uh, and then on the uh, photos you're looking at there, the client also asked us to, in addition to replacing the uh, broken or damaged slate, they also asked us to clean the slate roof. All right. Uh, any questions, comments from the commission? Yeah, I went over and took a look at it. I'm skeptical that you're not going to see this. I mean, I can see the other side of the roof when I'm down there on the street. I think it's visible. It's at 10 feet certainly is visible. Um, I did uh, have the gentleman stand there at the 10 feet mark. If you want us to move it further from the edge, we can do that. You want yeah, to I, mean, I, I can't tell what I can't tell what your angle of your camera is. If you shoot it low and up, yeah, you're not going to see. It, but a person walking that's a normal height, I think they can see it. Ned, would you have issue if it was on the other side of that roof? Or the other side of the house? It's better. I mean, the farther it gets away from that street, the less visible it is. Yeah. Okay. I mean, all, all the way at the other end would be the best location. Uh, other commissioners, I just want to make sure that we, we have, let's say, majority thought on, on the current placement. And I, I agree with what Ned said. I agree with what Ned said. I wonder what, what ducting will need to be installed, although that'll be pretty low to the flat roof. This is, this is a this is a ductless system. It, it, correct. It's just a uh, it's just a, a line set, you know, yeah. or two inch diameter foam line set. Just a gas so diameter, under. pretty small. Yeah. Correct. On the so photo you're looking at right there where it says proposed location where it's written, taking out of the equation, the arrow, if we center it on that back slate roof on and keep it on the uh, vinyl roof, is that okay? The Where we're showing the unit, that's the room they wanted to primarily use it. The further you get away, the less efficient it would still work. Um, again, you're not going to see it if you put it halfway down the slate roof. If you go to the other end of the slate roof, the percentage loss, I, I mean, I, I would recommend you do the calculations on what that loss is, but it's probably going to be on the, it's probably going to be less than 5% loss, even at that. Yeah. Distance. I mean, I just, and the reason I say this is, is well, I don't want to testify. I, loss, is, loss is a minimal issue when it comes to, the issue of whether it's 10 feet long or whether it's 50 feet long. If, if it gets to be 100 feet long, then you've got a problem. Yeah. Okay. And obviously that would not be the case here. Right. Yeah. Okay. And you can always get a booster on it too. I think within 10 feet, I mean, you make the lines larger, but you, within 10 feet of the other end of that roof, I think is a more reasonable solution. More acceptable. Okay. I can do that within 10 feet of the other end. It's fine. Okay. All right. Any any comments from the commission regarding the slate? I, I would do, would ask the question. What's the uh, you mentioned applicant like to clean the slate? Is there a method to that? I just want to make sure that we we understand what cleaning the slate entails. Okay, um, I'm, I would check with Roofing Wholesale to see what product they recommend to to clean it. That would be uh, washing with a hose. Be more of a, a mild chemical claim. 
Yeah, my, my only concern is if, if we're using any kind of pressure up there with with the fragility of the slate these days, I just want to make sure we're not going aggressive and causing more damage accidentally. That's, that's my concern. Absolutely. I agree 100%. Does HPO have any information on cleaning agents that are acceptable for, you know, 100 year old slate? I don't know of a specific one offhand, uh, so it's something that it could be submitted to staff if we want to, you know, make sure we double check what cleaning agent is. I think so. Yeah, that makes sense. sense. I agree with that. Yeah, I, I would say we. I would be a couple approving with that going to staff prior to the official prior to the issuance of the uh, certificate. And then, Jacqueline, if you get any any problems with what they submit, they can always come back. But I think the uh, we should be okay with your. Expertise. Good. Any other questions from the commission? Uh, Mr. Schmidt, would you like to uh, amend your application to have the uh, unit 10 feet from the opposite end of the roof as discussed? That's, that's correct. That'd be 10 feet from the opposite end of the slate roof, correct? correct. North, north side. Yeah. Correct. Perfect. Thank you. All right. If there's no other questions, is there a motion? Uh, on item GV 2105029693 City Park Avenue, I move to approve as amended by the owner that the unit will be located 10 feet from the north edge of the flat roof and that the cleaning agent they're going to use on the slate roof is to be approved by staff. Second. Any questions on the motion? We'll take the vote. Commissioner Panzer? Aye. Commissioner Durst? Aye. Commissioner Thiel. Aye. Commissioner Ferriel. Aye. Commissioner Foley. Aye. Chair votes aye as well. Ayes have it. Motion passes. Thank you very much. Have a great evening. Thank you. You too. Mr. Chairman, I've got to absent myself for a few minutes. I've got to, something has to be taken care of. I'll be back very shortly. Okay. Thank you very much. All right. Uh, item 5, GV-21-05-030, which is 633645 South Grant and 626 Yeager Street. Do we have an applicant for... This is Daniel Mather. All right, Mr. Mather, I heard your voice. I'm looking for your face. Uh, the studio? That's correct. All right. If you please raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. And please state your name for the record. Daniel Mather. Thank you very much. Jacqueline. This application is proposing to replace three garage doors to match uh, the other doors within the same condo complex at 644, 646, and 648 Yeager Street. Uh, and this is per the 2017 COA issued for those garage doors uh, with the new Clopay Premium Series Elegant Lawn Panel Model 9203 garage doors. And that COA from 2017 uh, specified that any new garage doors for this condo complex specifically use uh, the Clopay Premium Series that was mentioned. So the previously approved garage doors for the other condos in the complex appear to have been approved based on the limited visibility and the modern construction of the buildings. The proposed garage doors would match the previously approved garage doors in the complex following those COA stipulations and would be added um, as well to non-historic buildings and do not appear to be visible from the public right of way. So staff does recommend approval with any clarifications to be submitted to staff prior to issuance of a certificate. And that is based on the standards for alteration, specifically number nine. All right. Does the applicant have anything else to add? I do not. All right. Any questions or comments from the commission? Comments? Mr. Commissioner Thiel, did you have something? Yeah, I was going to make a motion. Okay, go for it. Um, an item GV 2105030-633-645 South Grand Avenue and 629 Yeager Street. I move to approve the submitted. Yes. All right, now Commissioner Durst has the second there. Uh, any questions on the motion? I'll just make the statement to reinforce that this is uh, matching the doors previously approved for this association. So it's it's keeping in kind with what was previously approved following that COA. All right, I'll go ahead and take the vote. Uh, Commissioner Durst? Aye. Commissioner Thiel? Aye. Commissioner Ferriel? Aye. Commissioner Foley? Aye. Uh, Commissioner Panzer had recused himself from this application. Uh, chair votes aye. 
Uh, eyes have it, motion passes. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, uh, Commissioner Panzer, are you back? I'm back. All right, we will move on to item number six, which is GV-21-04-026. This will have an uh, alpha and a bravo part. We'll deal with uh, those alpha first, then go to bravo second. Uh, do an applicant for 576-580 Cedar Alley. Yes. Yeah. All right, I heard your voice. I'm looking for your face. Uh, here we go. Please raise your right hand. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Yes, I do. And please state your name for the record. Uh, it's Nathan Sampson with B. Hall Sampson Deeds. Thank you, Mr. Sampson. Jacqueline. Okay, so this is a continued application for exterior alterations as well as new construction. The exterior alterations involve the roof, siding, windows, doors, foundation, entry stoops of the existing home. And the new construction would involve the, an attached garage addition. So at the April business meeting, the commission requested clarification about the gate shown between the existing building and garage that does not appear in the elevation drawings and requested a summary of what changes have been made to the application. The applicant notes that they will remove the gate from the proposed design. And if the owner would like to add the gate at a later time, this will be submitted for review at a later point. The changes to the application include um, to reduce the width of the garage facade along Burger Alley by 24 inches, to reduce the depth of the garage by 5 feet 3 inches, to pull back the roof over the side entry off Burger Alley to be recessed 5 feet from the facade to better visually separate the house from the garage. And the applicant notes the resulting lot coverage is now 54.7% which is down from 61.5% from in the previous application. And the rear yard is now 22.7% of the lot size, which was previously 13.9% in the previous application. So the proposed reduced uh, attached to the garage, although slightly over the lot coverage limit outlined in the zoning code, the applicant notes have two lot coverage advantages over a detached garage. First, the overall lot coverage is reduced as a detached garage on this site is permitted to be 612 square feet or 45% of the rear yard area. The proposed garage, including connection to the house, is only 522 square feet, also leaving more open area for the rear yard, which is a benefit to the owners and the neighborhood. So staff does recommend the new garage be separated from the residents, and that is for uh, that is based on the standards for alteration, including uh, number 1, 2, 3, 10, and 12, as well as the German Village guidelines under new buildings um, for garages and outbuildings. And that's for the recommendations of 5, 8, 12, and 14, as well as the German Village guidelines um, for the title of connectors, specifically number four. Okay. Uh, does the applicant have anything else to add? Um, I don't think so. Jacqueline summarized it well. I think um, our efforts in the revisions that we submitted were to try and just reduce the lot coverage that we had previously um, as much as we could and still allow uh, two cars or a two car garage um, and trying to, I guess, uh, with that connection, um, increase the rear yard uh, and try and get as close as we could uh, to the zoning requirements for that uh, for the lot just because it's a smaller lot. Okay. Uh, questions, comments from the commission. What is what is the size of the garage now? Just the garage itself, not the connector. Uh, the garage itself, right now, it is about nineteen. Or overall, it's twenty feet ten inches deep from like front facade to back facade. Yep. And then it's. Uh, Along the north, what is it on the north side? On the north side, we're looking at just a hair over 20 feet. So let's say 20 foot four. And I'm scaling it off the drawing. And what's the width be between what's the width of the gap? The gap between is three foot six. And we also, uh, I think Jacqueline noted pulled back that um, the cover over the side entry 
so that the separation between the garage and the house was more removed by, I think, five more feet than previously, uh, just to help um, help with that disconnect uh, as much as we could. Hey, thank you. Yeah, I was was fairly vocal against this last time around. Um, and I probably would have bet against um, being able to get this to a place that I would find acceptable and, and it's it's really close. Um, but I think it had I, I mean, I find that because the of, of the disconnection, the, the visual separation, the, the, I want to be careful about the right word, the visual distinction between the mass of the, the historic structure and the mass of the garage, um, both by uh, removing it horizontally and by pushing back the, uh, the overhang, uh, and also by getting rid of, of the gate at that face. Uh, between that, I think from a, from a land use perspective, I think it's a better solution um, than, than uh, disconnecting the garage would be. And I think that that was called out, it was discussed here. Um, it, would, it would just swallow more of a very limited piece of, of property. Um, the exterior space has been maximized, I think, by a reasonable amount. Um, and I, I also like, I mean, which is part of the same thing, that it has gotten narrower in terms of moving it away from the property line. Um, so all all of that put together, and and it being under fifty five percent lot coverage, uh, as far as I'm concerned, it it just just squeaks it by um, by my practicality test of what's best for the district. I could be persuaded the other way, though. <laughs> Mr. Durst, do you have any thoughts? Um, no, I feel like, yeah, he's, he shrunk it, pulled it back. I'm not sure how much smaller anything can get and still fit a car and get a door in there. And I don't think there's anything to be gained by making a de detached garage with four feet between it and the house. I, I think that thing that, that's that's exactly the way I feel about it, Ned. I think you're you're right. It's just not gonna it doesn't get us any anything better. No, it actually makes it worse. Mm -hmm. You got a god awful space between the house and the garage that is absolutely useless. Uh, I want to ask a question of the commission. Um, so I know in other duplex properties that have come up in the recent past, uh, when we look at stoops, um, we we don't want to get rid of the stairs going up to the doors. I know we talked about this last meeting, and I've, it's been turning over my mind of allowing the stoops to be removed on this property but not on others i'm just trying to understand the reasoning i, I think i'm there i just want to be talked into it hey, by the other commissioners hey jay or jay anthony what i would say is it's 50 50. some of them we've kept and some of them we haven't kept um this one down the street from me uh, eric's old house mm -hmm. the stoop at the front door is gone um and it's just a door there and that's fine uh is that right I think, well, anyways, maybe not, but anyways, it's 50, 50. Sometimes they, they go and sometimes they don't. I think we've kind of left that up to the owner. And if it's not too onerous by taking it off, we said, okay. And, and to me, I, I think in my head, I, I think it's the fact that it's a, what appears to be a, a more contemporary stoop. It's not a stone stoop. It's not something that would be traditionally original to the property. They were put on at some point in time. So it's. Oh. I'll put money on them. They were wood and they were straight out the front when the house, the building yeah. was built. Yeah, I, I think it's a fact of if it's not, if it's not a historical original stoop there, we're, we're just kind of taking off something that was added after the fact. I, I think that's what gets me there. I think there's there's also um, there's also the case where when when there's a historic path that led to it, it was part of a formal entry process 
we didn't want to leave we didn't want to lose the the uh nod back to that process yeah and now what we're talking about is a door with a, a stoop on front there, there there's you know we're not really losing that feeling of entry nest that was i know uh well we've, we've seen several cases of that um on back street over um uh, Stacy McTurk's house next to next to Frank Fetch Park is where where we very specifically wanted to keep that uh, that, that semblance or that that reminiscence of the entryway. But here, there's nothing beyond the door that's really necessary to do that. Okay. I just want to make sure we verbalize and document why, so it doesn't become precedent for others. That's all. Yep, yeah, we've actually got a case of boxwood cut to look like stairs. To me, it seems like it makes a difference if the stairway is uh, is parallel to the entryway or perpendicular to it. Gotcha. And I think the other comment I'll make, just again for the record, um, no curb cut here. It's coming off of an alley, um, so we're not losing any parking uh, to allow this garage there. Um, I say before we make a motion on that application might just be good just to look at the uh the variances talk through those and then we'll make a motion on each application individually so gv 2104026 bravo looking at the recommendation the variance recommendations uh, just for clarity which of these are a new condition i believe the, the majority are existing conditions mr chairman i just want to point something out here uh, yes, and i i hope i'm pointing it out correctly but that is the lot coverage indicated on our agenda is 6153 which i think is the old number mm -hmm. i think that that all of these may um May tie back to the old, probably tie, tie back to the old numbers, not the new numbers. At least I hope they do, because if they don't, then we have a, yeah. a whole different problem. Yeah, no, you're correct. I think that the updated lot coverages in our revised application are not uh, reflected in the text on the agenda. Yeah, if, if, uh, if staff would open up uh, the application itself, it outlines those. Um, there's a list of requested variances in the application and the updated numbers and areas are on that. And to clarify also, um, the, all of the, uh, variances requested are technical existing condition, non-conforming existing conditions, except for lot coverage and rear yard, uh, percentage, which we talked about previously. This is a March 10th letter. Yeah. This one is April 16th, Jay. Oh, well. So the Sorry. first one is the single family unit converting three to a single. Uh, the second one is lot coverage. The third is frontage to remain. Fourth, minimum side yard north variance. Fifth, minimum side yard south variance. And the combined side yards variance. Required rear yard variance. An extension into the right of way. Are there any concerns or comments on these variances? All right, if there are none, and there's no further questions from the commission, do we have a motion on these two applications? So, so Anthony, do we have to change something here? The fact that the what we're looking at from HBO is different from what you just had up on the screen. So I think that we need to make the comment that on the Bravo application that all those numbers need to reflect what's in the application as opposed to what's on the agenda. Okay. And I think they need to get read into the motion so that it's really clear. Yeah, I agree. So does someone want to make a motion on the first application, the alpha application, and then we'll do the Bravo application second. Uh, Mr. Chairman on GB 2104026A, 576580 Cedar Alley, Cedar Alley, I move to approve this submitted. 
Second. All right. Any questions on the motion? Take the vote. Commissioner Panzer. Aye. Commissioner Durst. Aye. Commissioner Thiel. Aye. Commissioner Ferriel. Aye. Commissioner Foley. Aye. Chair votes aye as well. Ayes have it. Motion passes. And the bravo. <clears throat> Somebody want to take a stab at that one? Yeah, if they can put the correct language up. I got it. Mr. Chairman, I have a motion on agenda item. Wow, agenda item number 6B, uh, GV2104026B, to sure. oh, wow, sorry, I had it here. There, we, there it is. Um, to recommend the variances to um, convert a three family unit to a single family unit uh, to allow lot coverage of 54.7% or 1,777.71 square feet to um, Sorry, side yard to um, uh, memorialize the existing side yard setback of one to 1.3 feet. To uh, that's sorry, that's on the north. Um, to wow, sorry, to memorialize the existing side yard setback of 1.5 feet on the south. To memorialize the existing combined side yard of two and a half feet or 5%. To memorialize the existing rear yard. This isn't this isn't an existing issue, is it? No, to um sorry. Uh, to recommend the variance for CC 3332 to reduce the Required rear yard to 22.7%. And to memorialize the uh, extension of uh, 2.4, 2 feet 4 inches into the right of way for the existing scoop. Second. Any questions on that motion? We'll take the vote. Commissioner Panzer? Aye. Commissioner Durst? Aye. Commissioner Thiel? Aye. Commissioner Ferriel? Aye. Commissioner Foley? Aye. And the chair votes aye as well. Uh, recommendation passes. All right. Thank you Thank very you much. Thank you very much. All right. Moving on to item number seven, GV-21-05-031, 181 East Beck Street. We have an application for 181 East Beck Street. Sandy was on. Oh, I don't, I'm here. I'm here, but I don't know what to do. I hear your voice. <clears throat> do you have your camera turned on? I have my camera turned on. And Jamie Weilbacher is actually here to represent my application. To see the, the video is not coming up. I'm not getting it. I am sorry. It's okay. How about Jamie? Jamie, could you say something so your video uh, pops up for us? Jamie, you're on mute if you can hear us. <laughs> it's not showing his camera is on and we don't see his picture, of course. Looks like he's working from his cell phone. Yep, I think that's right. Well, wait. See his camera now. I just sent him an unmute request, there I am. but I'm not. I think we've got him. All right, Mr. Wildbuck, please raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth? I do. All right, thank you very much. Jacqueline. Okay, this application is proposing to replace the existing metal roof with a new black EM membrane roof, uh, and that would be like a tenor's red. 
The applicant would like to also replace the existing skylights with the Lux skylights of the same glass size and the same or lower profile. This would be curve mounted Velux model FCM-2246 or the model FS-D06. Uh, and staff notes the existing skylights were previously approved in 1996. So the commission noted at the business meeting that EPDM is not typically installed for shed roofs and red is an unusual color for metal roofs in the village or EPDM roofs in the village rather. The original application did include asphalt shingles from the approved list as an option, uh, which was staff approved. So staff recommends a new metal roof or an asphalt shingle roof be installed for the shed roof type, and that's based on the standards of alteration number 12. Okay. Uh, does the applicant have anything else to add, Mr. Wabacher? Yes. Um, the interest wasn't to take a rubber roof and turn it red and put it on a wrong uh, slope. The amount of roofs in German Village has been disappearing. My house has three, next door has four that have been shingled over. And the, the asphalt shingles has been the solution to failing um, red metal roofs. But there's a lot of them that have been disappearing. Our interest isn't to, like I said, membrane wouldn't be our first choice, but we looked at the concept of red um, three tab shingles and red three tab shingles didn't appeal to my client, didn't appeal to me. Um, in German Village, this is my own personal understanding um, almost all the roofs with a pitch under 312 or under 812 would have been 10. I've personally experienced 112 and 1212 in the village. Flat lock or rolled seam was a lot more common than the standing seam in the village. It had to do with labor skills. Um, copper was rare. So the 10, if it was repaired correctly, was red. And Shingles are a come lately leak solution that has been erasing the red shingles and tar and um, <laughs> my my hands can attest to how much tar has been scraped off of some of the German village tin roofs. Um, anyway, so we found a TPO. You know, this is a probably not. You know, I used to be able to bring in things to the meeting. But there's TPO that do our tenors red in color. And this is one from uh, Versico. It's a, uh, that's used to be Goodyear. But it enables us to put something on there that doesn't have a shingle texture uh, that wouldn't look any different than a flat lock tin roof. So our interest was in a material that could replicate flat lock tin without having to actually install platform. Understood. All right, any questions or comments from the commission? Yeah, I just want that the, the color, the red color is integral to the TPO. Yes, yes. It's that's the one entire side of the nest. The other side's black like it is on a 060 type of TPO. I mean, I, I tend to think that this would want to be done as a test, but I'd be interested in seeing it because I think it's it's certainly better than you know the shingles on the on the really shallow roofs and um, and gives a lot of opportunity beyond um, you know just regular black EPDM. And and there there still are a bunch of these roofs that are on the, the flat lock um red metal that are slowly degrading or quickly degrading i guess at this point um i i'd like to see it i'm okay yes, mr wildback go ahead i'd like to make a comment is that tinner's red is a specific paint that's almost extinct now um it's a paint with at least 90 percent resins and less than 10% solids and the solids are almost all um, iron oxide. And the way it works is it bonds with the rust as it rusts and then you paint it again. 
my house is under trees in the front three square porch roof and i'm going to have to give it its third coat in 38 years but it's a wonderful thing it's incorrect you get the latex that some of the paint manufacturers tell you to use your roof is not going to be maintained the same. Uh, i just wanted to get that in there and my camera Inter is one of my things Huh? Any other questions coming from the commission? I just agree with Jay. I think it's a, it's a good test. I think it'd be cool to see how it turns out. Um, I think it's a creative solution. And it's thoughtful. I'm of the same opinion. Uh, I would I would just ask that uh, either Commissioner Panzer or Mr. Wallbacher, if you can provide uh, some addresses that have the original roofs there. Just so when we do our, our if, if this is approved as a test case and we go to review our tests, it would be good for the commission to look at those existing roofs. Granted, they're going to be aged, uh, but as a as a reference point, I think would be a good uh, exercise. Yeah, how yeah. many? I, I'm not. Uh, there's a lot of them out there. <laughs> Um, I think you said, I would say in your professional opinion, if you could just provide a handful of, of the best conditions that, that you would recommend. Yes, I can. If there's no other questions or comments. Is there a motion? Mr. Chairman, I have a motion on agenda item number seven, GV 2105031 East Beck Street to Approve as submitted as a test case. Second. And uh, Jacqueline, if you can just reiterate the typical conditions uh, in the applicant in the approval uh, that typically we want to see it when it's been notified when it's been installed, uh, and then we want to look at it um, uh, in the typical time frame after that. Okay, can do. All right, any questions on the motion? We'll take the take the vote. Commissioner Panzer? Aye. Commissioner Durst? Aye. Commissioner Thiel? Aye. Commissioner Ferriel? Aye. Commissioner Foley? Aye. Chair votes aye as well. Ayes have it. Motion passes. And uh, Mr. Wildbacher, thank you again for, for providing some good insight and uh, giving us a potential option that could be uh, added to the repertoire here in the village. Thank you. All right, uh, moving on, we're on to item number eight, GV-21-05-032-610 South Pearl Street. Hi, this is Stephanie Schmiel. I'm the applicant. I'm here. Hi, right, Ms. Mrs. Ms. Schmiel, if you please raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. And please state your name for the record. Stephanie Schmiel. Thank it's you very spelled C-H-M-I-E-L. Thank you very much. Uh, Jacqueline. This application is proposing to replace existing electric light fixture on the side of the house uh, to a gas light with a black finish. The work will be done by man plumbing and the installation is to be through either mortar or a possible hole from the existing lamp. The new gas lantern fixture is to be simpler in style to the fixture at 804 City Park Avenue. At the April business meeting, the commission noted that the proposed fixtures looked very contemporary and requested a Google Earth Street View and a check of the approval of the property mentioned with the similar fixtures. The applicant has submitted additional photos of examples of the similar contemporary fixtures found in German Village, including at 710 South Pearl Street, 1019 City Park, 636 Mohawk, and 566 Beck Streets. Uh, so staff recommends approval of any clarifications to be submitted to HPO staff. And that is based on the standards for alteration, specifically number three, number nine, and number 12. Thank you, Jacqueline. Uh, does the applicant have anything else to add? Sure. Um, there had been a question about, I think, the waste of energy with it. I will note that the model we're looking at has an electric switch, an ignition switch, so it would not be on all the time. Like some of the other ones in German Village, it can go on, on, on and off um, like a regular exterior lamp. Um, I think my picture here didn't do a great job of kind of depicting where this is and where it falls compared to the street. The street view one, I think, gave a better picture. It's probably 10 feet from the street um, and five, six feet off from, yeah, from the, the where the um, sidewalk ends. 
um, we are in a, I would say more commercial area of German Village. Um, there's a, as you can see, kind of a cedar or a cement block law firm next door to us um, and the Huntington Bank um, and Sherwin Williams are across the street. Um, I did afterward um, look up the design guidelines, published design guidelines, and it does counsel to go for simple contemporary fixtures. Um, and I would say that this is a pretty simple contemporary fixture. It's mostly glass. Um, you know, you'd see the brick. Um, I, I think that there, as the pictures show, I went through, I just took a walk through German Village um, and snapped some pictures um, while I was doing that at other contemporary fixtures. And it's similar to others that I would describe as glass black boxes. All right, thank you very much. Questions, comments from the commission? Yeah, I would just argue that the ones that, that are exhibit, given as examples analogous to this, the glass is in a frame whether it's a bronze frame or a copper frame or a black frame, this is this is frameless glass. This is butt glass with uh, rods holding it down. I think it's too contemporary, and especially on the cottage that is so sweet over in Pearl Alley, whether it's commercial or not, the detailing in that cottage is still intact. It's got the uh, arched window tops and the whole bit. I think it's just too contemporary. Any other questions or comments? I would just state that it doesn't really bother me. I'm not surprised that we're on opposite ends of this, Ned, but that's okay. <laughs> it's just over the top for me, that's all. If it was a simple framed glass like the other ones, I, no problem. I mean, I have no problem with gas either, but this one's just a little too glitzy. I think that uh, there's there, there are two very technical issues that I have with it. Um, and I think it leads back to, to kind of the aesthetic assumption or the, the aesthetic point that um, that Ned's making. Um, the bright brass. Well, actually, there, there, there are two. The two pieces are this. One is the top of the fixture is is quite heavy, and it it visually increases the separation of the top and the bottom of this thing and i mean i know how screwy this sounds but if the rods were black i would feel better about it, it I agree. It's, it's that floating uh that floating piece at the top that i'm having um the greater trouble dealing with and and especially given given the height of that piece you know being basically twice or more the height of the of the bottom piece of the fixture. Um, I, there's something about it that, that, that I, I just am having difficulty wrapping my arms around. The simpler the, the, the simpler ones and the the less I find this very decorative. And and it, it's strange that I feel that way about it, but I, I between the separation of the the, the two black pieces, top and bottom, and the brass rods, it it just seems really decorative to me. And I think, Ned, to your point, the one the the contemporary ones that we've tended to approve have really been very very simple. Like I said, this is too glitzy for me. Which goes to what you're saying, Jay. Commissioner Durst, any thoughts as the resident? Preservationist. When I first saw the fixture, I guess I it looked more like an interior fixture, and and maybe because it, it is frameless and just doesn't look like it would stand up to the outside. So from what I'm gathering, uh, and correct if I'm wrong, but it sounds like the concept of a gas fixture is not causing heartburn. Uh, the concept of a more for lack of better terms, modern, simple fixture um, doesn't cause heartburn. It seems to be this specific fixture with the, the brass whatnot on it seems to be what's driving the, the heartburn. Um, so for the applicant, we can take the vote as, as submitted. We're happy to do that. Uh, I, I think you hear kind of where the commission stands. Um, if, if you, I guess your options here, we can take the vote. Uh, if, if, uh, if it's voted down, 
Um, you could reapply with another fixture. If you'd like to continue this application, we could not take the vote and, and you could look for another fixture and you'll be right at the top of the, the next agenda as opposed to starting over from scratch. How would you like us to proceed? Um, could I have it in a two part where we approve that the gas part could be approved and then a second vote on the fixture so that if I have to reapply, it's simply on the fixture and, and not the gas? Uh, typically, we wouldn't approve those two separately, uh, but I, we're on the record now stating that we are not opposed to gas in concept. It's just we, we, we can't approve something that we don't have something to approve on, essentially. Sure. No, I understand that. Um, I guess I'll I'll see what the vote is simply because I can't. This is the first time I've attended one of these, um, and I can't necessarily count the votes in my head. Um, and then if it's not approved, I'll resubmit with a new um, a new fixture. If if you'd like, um, I'm trying to make I'm trying to get you down the path of, of least resistance uh, moving forward. So if we if we vote officially and we vote it down, you've got to start the submission process from scratch. I can take a straw poll for you. Sure. So you get a feel of, of where we're at across the commission, so you get that that information, and then you can choose if, if you want us to actually vote on the record or not. Does that work? That would be great. Thank okay. you. Uh, so, Commissioner Panzer, where are you at on this? A slim no. Commissioner Durst? I agree with Jay. Slim no. Commissioner Thiel? Agree with Jay. Commissioner Ferriel? Yeah, it's too contemporary. I'd vote no. Uh, Commissioner Foley? I would be the one slim yes, I think. In this vote. So, so right now, for the applicant, you did have your four no's, one yes. Uh, I don't think I don't think you have the majority there. So. All right, I'll continue it then. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, is there a motion to continue? Yeah, GB twenty one oh five dash thirty two six ten South Pearl Street. I move to uh, to continue at the request of the applicant. Thank you. Second. Any questions on the motion? I, I've got a, 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 a statement with it and, and um, as opposed to a question, maybe. Um, the, my objection is that it is modern as opposed to contemporary. And, I, and those words mean very different things to me. I think um, that's right. Contemporary, I, I don't have a problem with. And, and I mean, we've gone around and around a lot of contemporary stuff, but things that are truly hard edged modern. Are, are where we usually have greater sticking points. Okay, good point. All right, uh, we have a motion to continue on the table. We have a second. Uh, we'll go ahead and we will take the vote. Uh, Commissioner Panzer? No. To continue? Oh, I'm sorry, I apologize. To continue, yes. Commissioner Durst? Aye. Commissioner Thiel? Aye. Commissioner Ferriel? Aye. Commissioner McCool, or Commissioner Foley? Yes. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> Chair votes aye as well. Ayes have it. Uh, motion to continue is approved. Thank you very much. Uh, moving on to item number 9, GV-21-05-033. That will be 333 East Beck Street. We have Mr. Moran here. Yes, I'm here. All right. All right. Boys, looking at your picture. Please raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. And please state your name for the record. Michael Moran. Thank you, sir. Jacqueline? This application is proposing to retain new light fixtures on the west elevation of their home. The prior lights were broken and not repairable. Uh, no changes were made to the existing wire outlet or wiring. The applicant notes that they spoke with a city code enforcement official that relayed no permit was required when reusing the existing outlets. Uh, the new fixtures were chosen based on others present in the German village with the example photos included. So at the April business meeting, the commission requested a copy of the prior patio approval also associated with this uh, property. The fixtures are more contemporary in style than the style era of the building. So the commission may need to decide whether the style is appropriate for the character of the property uh, as far as standards of alteration number nine go. Uh, the fixtures are modern and they are on a home where historically no fixtures would have been present. So staff recommends uh, approval as revised, recommends approval of any clarifications to be submitted to staff for review. And that's citing standards for alteration number nine and number 12. All right. Does the applicant have anything else to add? 
Nope. All right. Any questions, comments from the commission? Yeah, Chairman, my, my only comment is gooseneck fixtures with this kind of shade to me always are architecturally language for secondary entrances and back doors. And that's the examples that he's given. They're back doors, side doors, and terrace doors. And I don't think they're appropriate architecturally for being used on a front door. It's not my front door. It's right, we read it as your front door. Uh, my front door is on Beck Street where my address is, and there's a lamppost by that door. Oh, wow. This is the view you're looking at is from Grant Street. Looking yeah, yeah. I see, I consider that your front door when I look at your house. All right, well, I consider my front door the moment that the address on Beck. Okay. I take back what I said then. Well, I'm not, I, I'm not sure that I. Um, well, understanding that, I'm still not sure that I that I agree that it's an appropriate use of these fixtures. Um, these are really purely utilitarian. They they come from a purely utilitarian place. Their generic name is loft light. Um, And I, I, I have a problem with it. I, I trying to get my arms around it. I just, Part of it is Jay, they're mounted at a height on either side of the door that's very formal. Yeah. I mean, it's a very, and, and maybe that's exactly it, Ned. It's a very formal use of a very informal lighting fixture. I agree. Yep. Mr. Durst. I have to agree because I, I think when I've seen these fixtures before, to me, they always seem like they should be above something, just illuminating something underneath them. My desire is to have the light angled down and not out towards my neighbor's windows across the street. I think you could find other fixtures that would maybe be more appropriate that would do the same lighting pattern where the outlet is you can see on the door it's about two-thirds of the way up most other options have the lights where they would go below where the connection in the fixture is and then they would be about halfway down the door this is one of the few options where the lights still above the and previously there were two carriage lights there that are lantern style or not yeah, sure. yeah. Coach, coach lights style. coach lights yeah and they look like they had a mount at the bottom the mount is in the same location correct and yeah in the wall but I'm, I'm saying the, the old fixtures um went above the mounting location Correct. I think you're getting exactly at what kind of the challenges with this. The the those are down throw fixtures that are mounted like at like eye height, right? And they just feel weird when when these are more decorative fixtures that are there currently, right? It's the location that that's tricky for me. And I don't know with the, the distance between the, the top of the door to the to the soffit that there is a good location for this type of fixture in this application that wouldn't feel weird. It's strange to me to have a gooseneck at like when you walk out the door, it's going to be hitting you like at your shoulder almost, right? That just doesn't, that's not a typical application for these. I would say it's about eye height. That's an 80 inch door for reference. Okay. So they're typically above you, this type of fixture when you come out. That's, that's what's striking me as odd. Well, when you're on ground level, though, because that's the base of the door is, I don't know. I understand. I know. I understand. I understand functionally when you're in the patio space, they'd be better. Yeah. I mean, ideally, it would be one fixture over the top, centered over the top of the door. It's not wired for that. The, uh, the existing stained glass uh, transom over the transom adds to the formality of the appearance of the door otherwise. 
that contributes to making these goosenecks lights seem inappropriate. It's a beautiful it's a door. door. Yeah. Beautiful yeah. front door. Pictures. Not a typical, not a typical side door. Oh, true. Well, pictures are deceiving. That door is wooden and it's been rotten and it's getting replaced. With a knocker on it as if it was the front door. There's a knocker on the front door too. There are two front doors. All right. Uh, so, uh, Mr. Moran, uh, would you like a straw poll of the commission or would you like to take a vote straight up? How would you like us to proceed with this? Uh, I guess I'll take the straw poll. All right. Uh, Commissioner Panzer. Hi. Boy, I think no. Commissioner Durst? No. Commissioner Thiel? No. Commissioner Ferriel? No. Commissioner Foley? Uh, I'm going to no know with the, this location for this fixture. I'm not opposed to the fixture itself, but I'm going to no know with where it's located. Okay. Mr. Moran, it looks like it's uh, pretty much across the board. Uh, we can take the official vote and make it official, uh, or we can continue if you want to look for another fixture. I want to make sure we proceed with how you'd like us to. So my options are to what? Get a different style fixture? So if you'd like to continue the, the application, you can search for another style fixture, uh, and we can take a look at that. Uh, that would keep your application open, so you'd be up at the top of the agenda as a continued item for next month. Uh, if we vote it straight up and it's denied, uh, it would be a brand new application uh, with whatever fixture you look for next, or you can uh, go through uh, other methods, hardship, uh, rehearing. Uh, you could go through the appeals process. There's several avenues of what you could do off of a denied application. So if I replace with the same style of fixture that was on there before that didn't work, do I need an application for that? I think if you're going to replace the the the, the previous fixtures that were there originally uh, with a similar style fixture, I think uh, staff we could let staff take a look at that and review it uh, for for similarity, and they could probably staff approve that, and you wouldn't have to come back to the commission at that state standpoint. Uh, if you're looking to to deviate from that and go larger or go a different style, that would come back to the commission. Okay. Um, well, I guess the continuation. Um, I am disappointed because I did. I intentionally want the light to angle down and not project outwards. And there isn't another option than what I'm using now, given where the location of the fixture is. Because any other option that would do that would be too low to where the door is, where they're to where they're fixed. You know, two thirds the way of the door, as opposed to above it. So can I just ask you if what if you're just trying to light the stoop up and I understand you're out there to the patio and stuff and probably don't want that light out there. Why not get rid of these? I shouldn't be recommending this. Put a recess can over the top of the door to light the stoop and do away with these. I don't really want to go through plump or you know, running electrical up and around, you know, through the door and then drill through the the stone piece above it. It would be through the roof, but whatever you decide. You would have the light come out through the roof? No, you wire it through the roof structure. Where would the light attach? It depends on the fixture that you'd buy. What kind of down can you'd buy that would light up the stoop directly? I'm, I'm sorry, I even mentioned it. I'm just having trouble understanding where the light fixture would attach to the structure of the house. It would still have to screw in at some point and wouldn't it have to attach to the stone. I think with that, with that e the eve the way it is, I think that would be a really tricky thing to try to pull off. Yeah, there's a good amount of soffit overhang between that. That's where you'd mount it, but never mind. So, uh, you like us to continue the application for you, Mr. Moran? Uh, yeah, go ahead and continue it, and then if I can find something that will work that is of similar style to what was there that didn't work before, I'll ask for a staff review, and then if that gets approved, I'll have them remove the application. Okay. All right. Is there a motion? Mr. Chairman, I have a motion on agenda item number 9, GV 2105. 033333 East Back Street 
um, to continue the application of the request of the applicant. Second. Any questions on the motion? No, we'll take no, the Mr. Mr. Yeah. Chairman, I suspect we can do this uh, without objection. All righty. Uh, without objection, and hearing none, the motion passes. Thank you very much, Ms. Moran. Uh, we'll move on to item number 10, GV-21-05-034, 792 South 3rd Street. We have Mr. Thomas on the call or another applicant for 792 South 3rd Street. All right, we'll go ahead and put this one back in the stack. And we'll move right ahead to item number 11, GV-21-05-035, uh, 333 East Beck Street. Uh, let the record show that Miss Moran is still on the record. Uh, Jacqueline? Okay, this application is proposing to install a freestanding pergola at the exterior patio. The pergola would be 9 foot high, 12 feet wide, and 10 feet deep. The material of the pergola, pergola would be cedar with 4 by 4 posts and 2 by 2 rails for, for the top of the pergola. The rails would be spaced 10 inches apart. And the Tundra Grid pergola hardware would, would be used to connect the 4 by 4 post. So at the April business meeting, the commission requested additional information on the proposed pergola hardware. And the applicant has submitted some additional photos. Got them up there. Um, staff recommends approval of any clarifications to be submitted to staff for review and approval prior to issuance of a certificate. And this is based on the standards for site improvements, letter A. All right, uh, Mr. Moran, anything else to add on this application? Uh, the only thing with those pictures, some of them had like that canvas shade. I'm not using that. That's just what was on the box or installation stuff. So ignore those. This is just the hardware to connect the four by four posts. Okay. Questions, comments from the commission? So the posts are four by fours. What are horizontals? The runners on the top will be two by twos. Two inches by two inches. Correct. And they're gonna span how many feet? Uh, it'll be the length of the pergola and then they'll be spaced uh, like eight inches, eight, 10 inches apart. I can't remember what I said. Okay. And you're, you're using just checking two by two rails, 10 foot long. With a one foot overhang on each end to make them 12 feet long. Yeah, Correct. they're cedar. Do you have a concern? No intermediate you... supports or anything. Uh, if I need to do a support across the center portion, so connect another four by four, um, I can do that, but it's not structurally holding anything and they'll be held in with, you know, two or three inch deck and screws. So. And I'll just make uh, make clarification for the commission. This this property is a uh, corner lot. Um, so it's it's there is no rear yard to this property. This is the only yard that the applicant has. And previously, we asked for the the uh, approval for the work there. I had they had removed a brick wall uh, around that patio space. That was what was there originally years back. Yeah, there was a brick wall around uh, that, and you. I met with the commission, and it was either May or June of 2017. And they mailed me the approval um, in like June of 2017 before construction started. So that's been there since 2017. I, I've got a, I got a couple, couple of problems. One is I, I don't have a problem with the idea of a pergola being here. I mean, I, I, if this weren't a corner lot, I would have, but I think this is your backyard. I mean, this is your, your, living space. I, get, I totally get that. So, I mean, I, I have no problem with it. Um, I, I'm concerned with the, the connectors that you're using just because they're black metal and you've got four by four cedar posts that are, you know, I'm assuming you're not gonna paint them black. Um, 
and it, it's going to be an, an odd looking detail because those connections are, are not uh, the, the connect connection devices are not slim sl slender and fine boned as they would say. The other thing is that that with uh, a nine foot span, even the four by fours at nine feet are are a little questionable and the two by twos. While they're not holding anything up structurally, in um, I, I'm I'm just I'm kind of just saying, um, in a matter of a couple of years, they're going to look like spaghetti. Uh, two by twos just don't uh, just don't hold their their straightness to weather and to icing conditions over time. It it's I can add a four by four. Uh, across the center and connect the two by twos from the center and the ex and the outside post. Yeah, I mean, I, I'd love to hear from somebody who has more experience building pergolas, but uh, and I've used a lot of two by twos okay. outside that have had problems with them. It'll all be, I mean, that's the reason why I'm using cedar and then it'll, it'll all be coated and, you know, deck feeler. So it's waterproof, yeah. weatherproof. I, I don't personally have a problem with it. Um, I think if the, the two by twos cause problems over time, you just have to have to come back and deal with it. Uh, that's the, I think your comment, Commissioner Panzer, is, is well noted, but I think that's the applicant's decision to make. I, I throw this out also. I assume you've sourced the, the 12 foot two by twos. I have to buy 12 foot two by fours and the lumber mill rips them for me to two by two. Otherwise I can get the six foot sec or I can get the, the smaller, the six foot and then have them connect to a, the four by four post in the middle if that's the route I go. I'm trying to keep it as simple as possible. Okay. Any other questions or comments? And the two by two is you is used as a railing. So it's called a two by two rail. So All right. If there's nothing else, is there a, is there a, a motion? I move on application number 11, GV-21-05-035333 East Beck Street to approve the application as submitted. Second. Are there any questions on the motion? We'll take the vote. Commissioner Panzer. Aye. Commissioner Durst. Aye. Commissioner Thiel. Aye. Commissioner Ferriel. Aye. Commissioner Foley. Aye. Chair votes aye as well. Ayes have it. Motion passes. Thank you, Mr. Moran. Thank you. All right. Uh, item 12 has been tabled. Is that correct, Jacqueline? Yes, that's correct. To the June uh, meeting. Okay. Uh, then we will move on to item number 13, GV-21. Dash zero five dash zero three seven two five nine two six five East Livingston Avenue. Do we have an applicant for two five nine two six five Christian, East Livingston? If you can hear me, Christian Brody's president. Uh, I hear you. Uh, I see you. Please raise your right hand. You can move it just a little closer to your head so I can see it. There we go. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. And please state your name for the record. Christian Berardi. Thank you, sir. Jacqueline. Hey, this application uh, is proposing to retain the relocation of a new door uh, landing and ramp, which has been moved north of the previously approved door location closer to East Livingston Avenue. The location was moved to meet residential code requirements for type B dwelling units and to accommodate building code and national electric code for accessible approaches and clearances required at electric service panels, equipment and facilities on the adjacent building exterior. The reference section is NEC 110.26, which requires a 30 inch approach width and a 36 inch deep clearance centered on the electrical equipment. So at the April business meeting, the commission asked for more information about what kind of equipment was needed for the clearances and if the equipment placement drove the move of the door location. The applicant has noted the equipment is existing electrical equipment. 
And in order to comply with the National Electric Code, Section 110.26, the dwelling unit entrance was required to be relocated, and that compliance with this code was driving the relocation. So additional information may be needed to determine whether options other than cutting into the historic material visible from the public right of way was unavoidable. Uh, staff does recommend avoiding cutting to historic material at a minimum, doing so at a location with the least visual impact. So at this time, with the information we have, we do recommend uh, either retaining the original location or moving it to another location if possible. And that is based on the standards for alteration number two, five, and ten. All right, uh, Ms. Brody, do you have anything else to add? I do not. Questions, comments from the commission. I think it was was covered very well by staff. I, I don't. I, I mean, there's an existing condition that you have to work around, and and it either needed to be designed around, or if it couldn't be designed around, somebody need to come back to us and ex explain why and how and what the solution was, not just to move forward and. Um, and make this kind of a change that it, it it is unlikely that we would have approved. I mean, it's not like the, it's not like those panels, those electrical panels materialized overnight. And uh, just just for clarity's sake, because. I didn't understand what we were talking about until I just saw the picture of it uh, on sheet 13. If staff can go to uh, item 13 or page 13 of the application. Correct me wrong. It's the panel on the adjacent building, not anything inside the current building. Correct. Mr. Brody. Yep, that's correct. Okay. I just want to make sure that was clear. All right. Um, so, Mr. Brody, I, I don't think you, there's going to be much deviation from Mr. Panzer's statement on the commission. Um, we can. I want to make sure we give you the options. We can we can vote on it as you've submitted it. Um, and if it's denied, you have your uh, courses of action you can take as far as uh, rehearings, appeals, and, and whatnot. And staff mm -hmm. can provide this to you, or we can continue the application if you'd like to to go back and revise anything. How would you like us to proceed? Uh, we would like to continue the application. Okay. Make revisions and resubmit. To, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Just to make revisions and resubmit. Okay. Uh, so the applicant has requested to the application. Is there a motion? I move on application number 13 GB-21-05-037-259 to 265 East Livingston Avenue to continue the application at the request of the applicant. Second. Are there any questions on the motion? All right. If there are no objections. Hearing no objections, motion passes. Thank you, Mr. Brody. I just right, want to note you. for the record that Mr. Brody knew me when I had hair many, many years ago. <laughs> that was a while ago. <laughs> it's good to see you, Brett. Good to see you, Chris. Just gets better, right, Brett? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> All right take care. I would like to see a picture of that. <laughs> it was long and curly. <laughs> I need a picture, too. Do we get a second on that or I just miss it? Yeah, I, I seconded it. Okay, thank you. All right, uh, we'll move on to item number 14, GV-21-05-038, 204 Jackson Street. Do we have one of the Barneses on the call? Hi. All right, Ms. Barnes, I see your face there. Please raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. And please state your name for the record. Jenny Carotis Barnes. Thank you very much. Jacqueline. 
This application is proposing to modify the existing east roof dormer and a one and a half story, 100 square foot second floor addition above the existing one floor addition with a west facing dormer and skylight. Uh, the new wall cladding would be horizontal wood siding with wood trim, and new roofing would be dimensional shingles. New windows to be double hung, and removal of the existing wood picket fence are also part of the proposed application. So at the April business meeting, the commission asked if the existing roof material was asphalt shingles or slate and whether the proposed replacement shingles will be from the approved shingles list. The applicant has confirmed the existing shingles are asbestos shingles and that the proposed shingles will be GAF slate line in English gray slate from the approved list. So staff does note that the dormer as proposed does be does appear to be large in proportion to the scale and house of the roof. So staff generally recommends approval uh, with any clarifications to be submitted to staff uh, with the condition that the door do, is in scale with the building and roof size. And this is based on the standards for alteration number 12, as well as the German village guidelines, dormers and skylights, number 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Thank you, Jacqueline. Does the applicant have anything else to add? Um, John? Um, well, I, it looks like John's on the call, but he's not speaking. Is there anything else? So I'm going to, is there anything, it's I, anything else I need to add that I need to say about this? Is, a, is that a question to us or a question to, mis, to Mr. Barnes? <laughs> That's a question to you guys. Uh, <laughs> We'll we'll ask our questions. Uh, I just want to make sure that you have nothing <laughs> specific to add prior to the commission's talking. All right. Um, uh, quite, no. Okay. Quite, questions, Sorry. comments from the commission. That's my only comment. Is the east elevation, the addition roof is lines up with the original cottage roof, which is not per the guidelines. Okay. Say that again, Ned. The east addition, the addition they're adding. I, I gather they're. Oh, I'm down sorry. There. Yes, I, I no, I, I was looking focused on the uh, on the dormer. The yeah. Yep. Yeah, but the roof, the roof is just a continuation of the cottage. It should not be. So rather than rather than just extruding the roof line out over the addition, there should be some kind of change there, Ned. Yep. For for your comments there. Yep. So it's more diminutive and more subservient to the existing cottage roof. Okay. I mean, in this case, it would probably need to to just scoot down underneath the freeze boards of the that end of the roof. Correct. I would agree. Yep. Okay. My husband's trying to get on. He's having trouble connecting. But okay, that's fine. That's good. Uh, any other comments, Commissioner Thiel? No, that was my my concern. Can you all hear me now? Uh, yes, I'm looking for your video, Mr. Barnes. Okay. I was on, and then all of a sudden, you couldn't hear me. Uh, yeah, um, just need to get uh, <laughs> need to get your video so we can swear you in. <laughs> oh, that's that says it's I'm on too. The video says I'm on. <laughs> I've got yeah, a, a low there. bandwidth notice. Oh, I'm just sitting in front of my computer. <laughs> just give it a let's give it a second. See if your bandwidth catches up to us. Uh, I should have plenty of technology. Um, try that. There you there go. There we go. If you please raise your right hand, Mr. Barnes, so we can swear you in. Do you tell truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Please state your name for the record. Jonathan Barnes. Okay. Okay. Sorry for that. I was listening. I was talking, but I wasn't being heard. Um, so yes. <laughs> so the issues here are uh, not to repeat, but uh, uh, just bear with me. Uh, the lack of height on the second floor, uh, lack of bathroom on the second floor, the aluminum siding, and the um, asbestos roofing, as noted. So. I'm listening to your comments, um, and I will tell you that um, this this renovation will be somewhat uh, phased. Um, so the aluminum siding and our intent is definitely to take that off. Uh, I suspect, although I don't know for sure, I suspect that underneath I'll find um, some uh, some asbestos siding 
um, like cement pour type, right? Um, uh, so we'll get to that, but the roof, uh, because we want to be dealing with the roof anyway, we want to fix that. So we want to replace the entire existing roofing uh, along with the, the new addition of the second floor on the rear, as you know. Um, and so I hear your comments about the roof. So, um, you know, to me, the, the more appropriate solution is to extend the roof if I'm replacing the whole roof, because to um, offset the new roof from the existing, um, well, the question is, is that going to be higher or lower? Um, if it's lower, then there's no point in even doing it because it's already low. It's already too low. If it's higher, I mean, I, look, I, I'm happy to do that. I, that was not what I thought would be the preferred solution because then you get, you know, a sort of a tall um, addition off the back. If that's something that you would consider, I'm happy to, I'm happy to draw that up. Yeah, I would say typically going higher is not not the option, uh, especially without some kind of disconnect between the original roof and the new roof. Um, extruding the roof is, is also not something that we we recommend hardly ever, if, if, if at all. Um, and usually the answer is going lower. Obviously, there's considerations that need to be taken into account, but I think that's kind of where we're at. Yeah, I mean, look, the only way that this can work, even with extending the roof, is that um, in that addition, um, uh, I that that ceiling is lower on the first floor than in the existing house. So I'm actually stepping down to get into that second floor addition, which gives me just enough head height, keeping the existing roof line to make that usable. Um, stepping it down, then there would be no point in any addition. Um, if, if, if you want to look at something where we step up just slightly, I, I don't really, I mean, I could use any, you know, every additional inch I can get on that second floor of the addition. So it wouldn't have to offset much. It could offset just enough to get the sort of the rake board in and enough of an offset that it makes sense, um, structurally, visually, et cetera. Um, but stepping down just it wouldn't work. Yeah, my intent was with the continuing the roof line was that um, since I've got a new roof on and I will have new siding, you know, there's really no uh, kind of visible um, seam between them, or there wouldn't be. But I'm happy to hear your comments. I think it, it, it's long been uh, practice of, of the commission not to allow uh, roofs on cottages, well, roofs on, on any structures really, to simply be extruded. Um, and that there, there needs to be a differentiation, uh, not only at the roof line, but at the, um, at the wall line as well, between the historic structure and the... Um, uh, and any addition. I think that there's, uh, so to me, simply extruding it is, is pretty much a non-starter. Um, there is a, there is by way an offset, if I just may, if I can say an offset already uh, with, if you can see on the plans uh, from the original, the east face um, on the lower right, the east face of the original house to the east face of the, uh, the that addition they're offset about four feet. So that's already distinct and I'm, I'm not changing that. Um, and on the back side, on the west side, I mean, you can't see that at all from anywhere um, because it's right up against a fence and right near the uh, adjacent house. Um, but I'm happy to talk about other roof solutions that you might think that you think might work better. The, um, if I may continue, the, the mm -hmm. issue with, um, T typically, almost always, we require that people go down um, at, at least below um, the rake boards. Uh, however, there's very specifically um, a, a discussion in the guidelines about unique condition or conditions that are unique to extremely small cottages, of which this is clearly one. 
Um, and I'm not, I'm not certain that I've got as much of a problem. And oddly enough, in some ways, I've got less of a problem with the idea of stepping it up, you know, six inches basically to allow a rake board to sit on top of the existing roof. And the reason that, that, I, that I've got a little bit less of a problem with that, perhaps even than, than stepping it down the six inches, is that that offset becomes more evident from the major public view. Um, when, when you have, you know, when you have an offset, offset like this, um, you don't necessarily even perceive the offset. If you have an offset like that, it becomes more clear. So I, I might not have a problem with it with a small, with a minimal vertical offset up as opposed to down, but simply extruding it. I'm, I'm nowhere with that. Now, Commissioner Panzer, um, with with this second floor addition to that to the rear to the rear footprint, um, it's not going to be as currently shown. The roof stops short on the west elevation. So, if we pop up, do we do you do we want to have that roof extend down to kind of be to follow the original roof, or is is having a stop short on that side? Uh, let me can I just say just so we get our, our uh, terms correct um, the north and south elevation are reversed so we're talking about the east side actually but I understand. okay well now I just got really confused sorry <laughs> the, the, front, sorry. the front door is on which elevation is on the is on the it says uh, north it should say south north is south here and south is north so <laughs> that that Top left elevation, correct. That's the front facing Jackson. On the rear, below, is that setback on the addition. Um, then I think Commissioner Harkey just made a, a really well. Sorry, I just got really confused again because the dormer, The south elevation, which yeah, is really right the either. north elevation. The west elevation is the east. Obviously, I have some quality control issues here. So just just flip all your cardinal directions, then we're fine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, but the, well, uh, right. Um, the, no, because if you look at the south, at what's labeled the south elevation, which is really the north, that's great. You're looking at it from what's labeled the west elevation from the right, looking towards the left. Correct? Yes. So, well, top left is the south on Jackson. Top right is the west elevation. Bottom left is the north, which is um facing a adjacent garage bottom right is um yeah but you got another east. problem because look at the relationship of the cutback um in the addition to the new dormer and then look at the north and south elevations neither one of i mean it appears to show and that cutback on the south elevation what's labeled the south yeah. elevation but the dormer's on the wrong side no, that's a different dormer, which if I re-raise the, that dormer you're seeing on that, uh, the north elevation lower left is in the bathroom. You can see that on the, on the, the west elevation top right. See that dormer? That's what you're seeing. The, the other dormer that's beyond isn't shown. Yeah, it's not shown, Jay. So, Jay, there's okay. a dormer with no windows on the elevation that's labeled yeah. east, but is actually the west. And I think what he's doing is he's showing that one because it's closer, if I understand correctly. There would be another dormer on the other side that's further down. Is that correct? Now, there's something wrong here, folks. Because if you look at the, if you look at the thing that's labeled south elevation, forget about what direction they really are. Mm -hmm. Let's just talk about labels now. If you look at that elevation down the lower left, and then you were to rotate that, and move it out to the end of the west, what's labeled the west elevation. 
It's it's missing the large dormer. There and that go. elevation. Yes. Yeah. That's yeah. what I'm saying. And that elevate that dormer's really close to where that cut is. Well, it's I don't know six feet probably away. You're talking about the east dormer, the larger one, the one with the window, the one with the windows. Yeah, it's about about yes. I don't know, oh, maybe it's, it's four feet away from the edge. Three feet, three four feet. Hey, staff, if you can jump back two pages. Should be an overhead view. There we go. And zoom in on the on the roof plan. There you go. That that should explain it. Yeah. Larger dormer on the on the east, smaller on the west. Right. And on this plan, south is up. Yep. Can you zoom out a little bit so we can see the the what you are? Okay, stop there. Perfect. So Jay, but my comment was, if if this rear piece roof pops up above the primary roof to give that rake board visible up there, this left side of this plan, that roof stops short. That that's my comment. You're going to see that rake board stop before you hit the bottom of the original roof going down. Uh, where are you? Well, where exactly are you going to see that from? From Jackson and Macon Alley. Although well, it'd be a return, return, right? lost by the dormer. True. True. I don't think, yeah, I don't, I mean, from Macon, that, that cutback is going to look a little strange, maybe, but I don't. You're not going to get that full on view of that. Yeah. I mean, you never, you'll, you'll almost never see that rake board. Correct. At right. all. I mean, it'll be higher than that dormer because the dormer is in is in line, right, at the ridge. Uh, but it'll still that dormer is in front of it from, you know, from the main street from Jackson. It, it takes care of my concern. Yeah. I I'd like to hear you know Ned and Teresa on the idea of the of it being. You know the rake board on the addition being on top of the roof of the historic structure. Maybe I'm the only one here. No. To wrap my head around if if the addition second floor addition roof goes higher, what happens to the small dormer? The small that... dormer can go away really um, on the on the west side if that roof is is higher. As far as I'm concerned. I mean. Let's make let's make clear what we're talking about by higher. I'm talking about the height of a rake board. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and, and it looks like you have a large shower in there, and I don't think that's going to work. Yeah, well, it probably will need a dormer unless we can bring it up a little bit higher. No, that that then I think you well you have to go way high for that for you to yeah. get rid of that dormer and still maintain that space inside. Yeah, and I can tell you that dormer on the west, I don't know that you can see that from anywhere. Close. Right now, yeah. So, Jay, to answer you see your that question. In the photos. Yeah. Jay, to answer your question, I, I don't like any of the additions going higher than the original cottage, but we have them all over the place. You know, I don't I don't know how you can say, I don't know, I can't say no to it because of that. I would say, I say that where I'm at with it is I'd rather have it pop up six inches than try to have a separator and have something larger behind that. And then we're end up with covering the entire lot. Yeah, no, uh, yeah, I agree. I agree. I mean, my preference is that it's lower, but. You know, it's, I understand well, the that, circumstances. Okay. If it goes up a little fine. Yeah, but, my preference but not would be another, lower too, if I can make second it work. floor or the roof. We got some of those in the village that are just awful. What? Yeah, I, I, I mean, and it, and it starts looking weird. If it's more than the height of the rake board, it starts looking really weird because you have that overhang, and then, then you start with some odd looking stuff, or you wind up with the rake board and the, you know being right up against the you know with no overhang, uh, the rake board right up against the siding, which is also a bad detail. Mm -hmm. 
I mean, okay. just for constructability, I'm willing to give you some more room than just the rig board so that you can flash to it and everything else. Well, uh, maybe, I don't know that I want that rig board sitting right on the shingles, but that's what I'm saying, Jonathan. Is yeah. I would give you some room so that you could flash up against what is the back wall of the uh, the house yeah. and the rig board would hang over it. That's fine. I'll work that out. I, is but it, it has to have some depth. I mean, it's got to have an eave. Is it a crazy you want idea? Eve? Well, that's the question. It really doesn't have to have an eave. I, I think it does. If you're going to do that, I think it needs to be architecturally well, delineated. Is it a crazy idea to ask him to move it down and then have the dormer that 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 has no window just go the whole length of the addition? Then you'd get, no, you get no. I can't to, even get into the room if it's lower than the existing room. Well, go back to that section. I'm sorry. Just help me. Help me understand. Help. Like that section there that's labeled east west yeah. section right there. You've got yeah. the dormer there, right? Yeah. And that's that's really what's getting you the head height for that area. <laughs> exactly. And when you go back to the elevation, that dormer stops short, right? And only goes so far. If you just extended well, that dormer all the way back, so wouldn't be like you a be monitor. able to bring what's that? Yeah. Wouldn't you be able to bring the whole thing down a little bit and have all the head space you need? So that the the door basically becomes you basically Down. end up with a yeah. No, I can't. Well, I can't lower the ridge at oh. all. I can't. I can't get in. Gotcha. And, yeah. I'm just trying to say, rather than you know, if you just change the roof slope, do you do you get the head height you need with it down? I don't know. That was just another idea. Yeah. I think I, Brent, your restriction would be the existing roof. Your, your door would give you head height in the addition, but you can't get into it because that roof is there still. That makes sense. That makes so, sense. Exactly. So what's the ceiling height in the addition, the current addition? And how does that match up with the, the existing house ceiling? Height? The ceiling height in the addition, which is a one-story addition, right? Yeah. Is lower by about a foot. That's why I can... Um, uh, that's why I could continue the roof as it is, right? Because I got another foot, which is barely enough for some of the room, but not all of it on but, the second floor. But if, if you, if you, if that floor drops a foot, that tells me you're going to have the same clearance in the existing house in the cottage if you drop the roof on the wood cottage in the addition. If you drop the roof on the additional foot, they'll have the same exact space height, et cetera, that you've got in the existing cottage. But I, I don't have the width because it's a narrower addition, so I can't. Um, it's not the same space. I mean, even in the addition in the existing building, I mean, you have I, about I see what you're saying. Okay. I know. Yeah, I, get, I get it. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Um, I just want to I clarify. This is a way forward I, in myself. I think, you know, bring it just on top of the existing roof. Okay. With just as, as much, as, as little offset as I can to get that rake board and make sure that it's a but it's a reasonable construction detail. I'm I'm fine with that, um, and I think we would probably need to keep that west dormer. But again, you're not going to see it from anywhere. Uh, and Mr. Barnes, I want to get a couple of clarifications. So we're looking at the at the uh, report, and it identifies wall <clears throat> siding to be wood trimmed, shingles, double hung windows, picket fences. <clears throat> Uh, looking at the, the application documentation, it's calling for existing stuff on the new portion. Or what do we? No, buy? it's it's aluminum siding on the house. The addition, I don't want. I'm not going to put aluminum siding on the addition. So the the second floor addition, but also the the um, existing addition right below, that's going to have new siding. Okay. The rest of the house will get changed to re, re, to uh, uh, replicate that when I do the, the, the siding on the rest of the house. Okay, so sense? so when I'm looking at the drawings you provided right now, sheet 201, everything just says existing. Nothing is saying new on the house. So we're just, we're just looking at Correct. the wood siding <laughs> up on the dormers in this application, and there'll be a separate application coming for the rest of the house. Is that correct? For, yes, for the rest of that of the existing house. The addition, again, on the back does say new siding that will get new siding, but not the rest of the house. Okay, I, I see it. So the new wood siding on the portion of the of the 
what's called the West Elevation Detail 4201. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. <clears throat> and uh, what uh, profile of wood siding are you proposing on that? Oh, uh, I think just a, uh, just a, you know, a bevel lap siding. What dimension size? Probably a. Mm, I haven't gotten there yet. Probably a what, a, like a five inch exposure or something. So a five inch lap. Yep. That works. All right, and then uh, dimensional sh shingle should be from the approved shingle list. So yeah, those staff. are specified in a follow up email. Yep. And then windows will be double hung from the approved window list, and that'll be through staff. Yep. And remove wood picket fence. I don't think anybody here has a problem with that. Speak now or head over to peace. Okay. Uh, if there's no other questions or comments, is there a motion? Are we not going to get drawings to look at the new uh, roof line? If if you're able to approve this, knowing what you know, how it's going to change, I will absolutely send you drawings as soon as possible. Ned, do you want to see us again with, with new drawings? Yeah, I, I, can't, I can't approve this based on this because I don't know exactly how it's going to end. I mean, is it going to be a, is it going to be a foot, two foot, three foot? Yeah, okay. no, I'm, I'm, I would love to, but no. I'll say six inches, but I understand. Yeah. Okay. So then, well, Mr. Barton, say that if, if we say that's going to be less than a certain amount of inches, can we do it then? Can we approve it with drawings to follow up if we if you give us an amount that not to go over? I would want the commission to see the drawings just because we're having a couple of exceptions here. So I don't think I would want to this to be staff approved. So I would okay. recommend continuing the application. Yeah, having you be I agree. at the top. I agree. So, so Mr. Barnes, would you like to continue application? Yes. Okay. Well, I as long as I have an understanding that we're all, all on the same page, and Ned and everyone, I think we are. So yeah. I'm, I'm going to keep this thing as low as possible. Um, I'll even show you that detail, that rake detail, to show you how that works. Yeah, and and, and Jonathan, I'm I'm like I said, I'm, I'm not happy with any of them being higher than the cottage, but I think for constructability reasons, you need to make it work. And if that's, yeah. you know, a little more than just whatever, but you need to make it work so the flashing can get in there, somebody can get a roof under there. I think it needs to have an eave, and I think the trade off is okay. You go a little higher so that you got an eave on it, so it looks right. I don't, I don't disagree. I'm not concerned as much about the, the, uh, the rain as I am snow build up against that yeah. eave. But. Yeah, yeah, I agree. So let's I'll let's work. continue it. Okay. okay. All right. Sounds good. Yeah, on GV 2105-038-204, Jackson Street, I move to continue. Second. Any questions on the motion? We'll approve there's no objections. Here are no objections. Motion passes. Thank you very much. All right. Thank Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right, we'll move on to item 15, GV-21-05-039. Uh, 1122 South Pearl Street. Uh, Mr. Kavitko, are you there? Yes. Yes. All right. I uh, heard your voice. I'm looking for your camera. He was just on, but he just turned off. Okay, we got the, uh, Eugene Belba representing the drawings and Dr. Kavitko properties as well as uh, Dr. Kavitko is online also. And the window representative uh, can answer any questions about replacement of the uh, existing windows. He has done an extensive uh, real, study real, of- Real quick, study. before we get too far, we gotta swear everybody in. Uh, so if you please raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth? I do. I do. All right, Mr. Belba, please state your name for the record. Uh, Eugene Belba. All right, Mr. Kavitko, please state your name for the record. Dr. Brian, Dr. Brian Kavitko. And I think I see Mr. Abner. If you please state your name for the record. Robert Abner. All right. Is there anybody else? No, sir. All righty. Okay, Mr. Bevel, go ahead. Uh, we have two phases to the application uh, of appropriateness. Is one is replacing the windows, and the other is improvements 
to make this residence more useful by adding a single one and a half car garage as well as a drive and uh, taking advantage of an older curb cut that was abandoned. All right, and we're a little out of order. Uh, so if uh, Jacqueline, if you want to go ahead and read this one out for us. Sure, so the application uh, is proposing to replace all the historic windows with new Pella windows from the approved windows list and also proposing to construct a new one and a half car, one story uh, detached garage at the rear of the lot. That would excavate and construct a new asphalt drive, turnaround, and concrete curb from the street to the new garage. The evidence of the old curb cup is visible, and the old photo shows the original curb ramp. And the commission did see this, um, the curb cut as a conceptual at the January meeting. So at the April business meeting, the commission requested a key plan to understand which photos show which windows, um, which windows are shown in each photos. So it is unclear from the submitted photos if all windows require replacement. Damage to trim is evident. Uh, the damage to the sashes is not completely clear from the photos. So staff would recommend a window key be included to determine if all historic windows do require replacement. Uh, staff does recommend approval of the proposed garage with any and all clarifications to be submitted to staff prior to approval. And that is based on the standards for alterations number two, five, and six. Okay, now, now we're back on order. Uh, Mr. Belda, anything else to add to, to Jacqueline's? Uh, the the window photos were towards the end of this uh, application. I think we just saw them uh, scroll by. So uh, that's our primary submittal on the windows, existing conditions of the windows. And we understand there's no uh, restoration work that's been done or plan that was in effect at all on any of these windows. And one of the windows is a non-conforming window. All right. Uh, questions, comments from the commission. I'll jump in. It sounds like we hear one of these every month with the windows. Um, and it's just, I, I, I'm struggling to, to, from what's submitted, it's really hard to determine if these can be restored. Or if they need to be replaced, which we kind of struggle with every month on these, don't we, guys? Yeah, I would say typically we would have staff's report of a site visit, but with the current condition or current situation with COVID and, and staff not having those visits, I think it puts more onus on the applicants to to document the conditions. I think that's what was mentioned with a window key plan. To identify here's the elevations, these are the windows, here's a photo for each window. I think barring that, I think we have a hard time giving a, a due diligence to, to the conditions of the windows. Um, so if, if I can, uh, I'd like to put the windows aside um, and have the commission talk about the, the new construction of the garage. Um, any thoughts, comments, questions about the new garage construction? Is there uh, kind of the beginning of it? Is there um, an analysis, a, a site use analysis on on this in terms of site covered, lot covered? It it looks like it's probably okay, but we really should see the numbers. Yes, there's data data on the site drawing uh, speaking to the uh, twenty five percent required lot area as being main, maintained. Well, it's not only that, but it's it's not, not only that, but it's still there. Look at yes, I'm still here. Look at the uh, site drawing, the th the fourth flash sheet. There's. Uh, what was your question about the site coverage? Are you asking about uh, rear lot uh, clearance? No, overall lot coverage is not allowed to exceed fifty percent. So if you take the, the primary structure and the, the garage structure, take yeah. the square footage and put them together, it shouldn't exceed 50%. That's a, a code issue. Right. So whenever we have a new construction on the, on the property, we, we want to make sure we're we're not approving something that, that is going to all of a sudden require code 
variances. We want to deal with that ahead of time. All right, I have to have a calculator, but I can figure that out for you, I think, real, real quick. Uh, so, for the, well, he's calculating that for the commission uh, in terms of of placement, in terms of um, architectural design. Any thoughts on that? Well, I mean, there, and Karen's not here, but it's really close to an existing tray. A 24 foot diameter tray looks like it's about to a few feet away from the garage. Yeah, it's it's probably within the protection zone, Jay, of those roots, you're right. I would I would think. I mean those root balls can be as big as the the canopy sometimes. I would ask the question of the applicant, the, the placement of the garage. So, so the garage is being accessed from the sh street at the front of the property with the drive going back. The garage door is currently offset to the left. Uh, in order to protect that tree, is there an option to site that garage differently? If you're already going to be offsetting the garage door? To protect that tree, uh, the available space at the rear of the lot does not uh, does not uh, could be probably just a little bit, but not enough to to change the entrance to the other side or to slip the garage because that moves everything towards the one side of the uh, left side of the property, and we just it, it affects the ra turning radius of the vehicle. Just too tight. Can I be heard, can I be heard or not? Uh, yes, I can hear you barely. Okay. Okay. So, so uh, Eugene, Eugene, we could probably notch that rear corner inward because it's a one and a half car garage, so that we can have uh, room for storing things like chairs and a lawnmower. So, right there in that corner by the tree, couldn't we cut that in and just make the half part less, the storage part a little smaller? It makes a hip uh, a hip roof very difficult to build that way. Oh, that's right. Oh, that's right. It makes that's it right. makes would be easier under a gabled roof. Oh. Well, the existing residence has has hip roofs, and it's pretty common for this uh, houses around this area to have hip roofs. Have you guys examined uh, the, you trying to, the, the tree yeah. and have concern? Do you have the same concerns? We felt, no, we, we felt were we were far enough away from it. So what, one of my other concerns looking at this is right now the garage itself is set back one foot six inches from the property line. Mm -hmm. I, I, and I may be wrong, I'm not a code official, but I, I believe a three foot setback is what would be required per code. I thought that only was was affected on the side yards uh, setbacks of three foot. I thought it had something to do with with fire code. Brent, do you have any thoughts? These on this? Well, there's, yeah. You know, I don't do enough of these resident. I don't do these residential things enough to really have a lot of insight on that, Anthony. Um, yeah. I'm not sure. Might, I think it's something needs to be investigated because if we haven't had to push this thing forward, that's going to change a lot of stuff. Yeah, you're you're right, Anthony. There's a requirement for depth, not only from sides but the back, for for fire and, and construction resistant that construction. Would, that would make sense to me. Ed. You're right. And and if I could think outside the box a little bit here, so right now, the garage is not really aligned any, any lot lines. Um, so right now, it's kind of designed. It looks like you need to come in and, and kind of do a maneuver to get into the garage. Would there be any possibility of taking the garage? It doesn't necessarily need to be facing if you tucked it back to the left well, side of the lot. Is there something a way to positioning of the garage to, to alleviate some of this stuff? Yeah, I almost wondered, Anthony, if you turned it 90 degrees and had the, the door facing, you know, 
um, whatever direction that is towards the towards the tree. Towards the south. Yeah. yeah, I'm just not sure what the turn array is showing right now because it looks like the looks like yes. you have a box for a car. If it pulls out down to the left, it's going to run right into the steps. You don't got enough room to really turn around and get back out. Okay, the lot is too narrow to rotate the garage. Okay, it's only a 39 foot lot. It's it's too narrow to rotate yeah. the garage for access on either side. The the uh, turn the turning area is uh, uh, what's known as a three a step turnaround. You have to go back and forth with the vehicle up to three times to be able to turn it around. Uh, this this uh, turnaround area is shown as three H equals thirty feet. Well, that's three times the length of the uh, of the car, and the other direction is two H equals twenty feet four inches, which is a required turnaround area for a car that has a, a wheelbase of 10 feet, two inches. A Toyota Camry has a wheelbase of nine feet, two inches. Uh, this area is given in the uh, architectural graphic standards as a an acceptable turnaround area. And, and I'm, I'm asking the question of why is there a turnaround at all? If you drive in, you pull in, you back out. I, I just, I, I'm not sure what the turnaround is there for. Okay, we're trying to, you, you, it's very inconvenient for the operator to back out into this, to the, uh, Pearl Street, which A is a narrow street, and we're we're not wanting the the, uh, the user to have that inconvenience. Okay. It's a definite benefit to be able to turn around on the on the lot and not back out into the street, which is Pearl Street is fairly narrow. And the idea of the garage also takes a car off of the street for parking, and Pearl Street has parking along one side of it as. Most most lots do, but it's to give the convenience of being able to turn around on the lot. Okay. If, if, if I may, if I may, and I, I don't know whether it's time to cut to the chase on this or not. I'm not prepared to approve a garage that 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 I, unless I have assurance that it's not going to do damage to that tree. Mm -hmm. um, con convenience aside, there are countless circumstances in this neighborhood where people back out onto 3rd Street, onto Sycamore Street, onto Mohawk, and onto a variety of other streets, and pulling that garage, making it, making it a single wide, and pulling its face down so that it basically is, is close to the end of the house and short enough to stay well away from the street. Uh, well away from the tree um, would seem to address both those things. I, I, so, so my thought is, my thought is we could make it, we a, could one make it a one car garage, garage but really, I really, really don't want to be able to, 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 be able to pull out forward. And I don't, and I don't know, why know why that would be an issue if the tree has been addressed by making it a one car garage. I don't, well, first of all, because I don't think it does. But it's, that, I, and I, I don't mean please understand, I don't mean to make light of that. Um, I'm not at all certain that increasing, you know, two feet to six feet is given the, the size of that tree is, is going to right. do what needs to be done. Okay. Uh, can I make a comment? The, the uh, storage could be, could be, uh, or the rear wall could be sloped to get the clearance required uh, for the rear yard setback. The uh, storage could be put on the opposite side, and the and the garage shifted so as not to affect yeah. the the circulation pattern of the of the vehicle. But it would mean that the rear wall would have to slope, which I'd have to look at that and see what would what how that could be resolved. Of course, the garage would move away from the tree, but. Ned, any, any thoughts? No, I, I think what he's just talked about is probably the, the way to go. I mean, ideally, you don't want to build in the drip line of a tree. But. We've, yeah. seen it, we've seen it happen. Well, and, and actually, I mean, the, 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 the drip line, 
we need an arborist or a landscape architect to give us better information on what's required in order to protect that tree. Yeah. It usually takes five to eight years to kill them. <laughs> um, Jay, I would say, though, I've written tree protection specifications in general, not knowing the species. The drip line is the is is kind of the the, the rule of thumb. That's well, yeah, exactly. I mean, it's kind of the gold standard is you stay out of the drip line, you're going to be out from the roof. But I've. I mean, I'm going through it now, and actually we've gone through it with Karen, where if you protect, you know, if you right. will protect an area that's somewhat smaller than that. Right. Has to do with yeah. the diameter of the tree. I mean, it has to do with a lot of stuff that I don't. The species, et cetera. Yeah. Species and, and you irrigate like hell after you cut the roots and some other <laughs> stuff. So. so I think in terms of the garage, I think we're going to see this again in order to make a, any kind of uh, action on it due to some of the design changes. I will make one note, uh, your note 11 on here of a new asphalt drive. Uh, I, yeah. I don't think we've ever approved asphalt uh, drives in the village. <clears throat> okay. So I would be take that into account when you come back. Typically oh. concrete, uh, the higher end would be brick, but typically concrete's the base uh, material we would use as opposed to an asphalt material. Okay, well, is that in your guidelines someplace? I thought to look through those, but okay, that's fine. I understand. Um, as far as the windows go, I, I think we really need to get that key plan uh, of which photos go to which windows, so we can identify which. Rob is on the. Rob is on the on this call. Yeah, I'm here. Go ahead. So, uh, I I did take all the photos uh, that are there shown. Um, essentially every window is in pretty much the same shape. There are a few that are certainly worse. Um, there are mismatched storms affixed to some windows and not to others. Uh, and truly the win windows that have storms on them honestly seem to be in worse shape, uh, than some of the ones that do not. Uh, I think there actually are two non-conforming or non-historic windows on the south face towards the rear of the house uh, currently. Um, but all of the windows exhibit very, very drying conditions, uh, dry rot, um, separation is horrible splitting and checking. Uh, many have active rot going on. Um, the house was apparently empty for some time prior to being purchased most recently by Kvitko's and uh, you know, so sub subsequently, the windows should have been probably had something done to them 10 or more years ago from just from the way they look on the exterior. So, so um, I, 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 I'm gathering we're going to continue this just because of the garage. Um, and I didn't realize we had this window issue. I would have walked over there yesterday or the day before to take a look at them. I still like to have that opportunity. Okay, I would I would be more than happy to meet someone there as well if if that would work. An another question I've got is that it appears that several of the windows are um, four of either four of oh god it's weird weird it looks like they're two over fours. Ned, I mean, Ned, would you be willing to meet the the applicant or the representative at the site and and do the the review yeah, for the commission? Right, I'd be more than glad to. Yep. That'd be awesome. So I, I'd be willing to to use Ned's opinion, uh, professional opinion on on the condition of those if he's willing to do that. Um, I, I think we need to see the garage revisions provided to us. I, I don't think that there's any mm -hmm. any uh, pushback against the concept of a garage, as you've heard. But I think as mm -hmm. we see the drawings again, uh, another another stab at it. Okay. Um, so, so if I can make, yes, sir. Go ahead. Um, when this gentleman, this gentleman from the commission, commission goes, goes there to look at the windows, windows, could he look at the tree as well? Because I remember that the, there's a the, garage, on the, the garage, garage on the other side of that, that, that property line, line that is just as close um, as, as what we're, what we're proposing may be closer. Yeah, there's an existing garage. Uh, yeah, trust it's me. It's been there for uh, you know, maybe less than 10 years. 
Yeah, I'm, I'm no expert on landscaping other than the general rules we talked about, but I'll be glad to take a look at it and pass the data information back to the commission. Yeah, All right, thank understand you. Understand what the species, et cetera, is, and maybe Karen could provide some input. Yeah. 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 Karen or, or an arborist, an independent arborist. That'd be um, You know. Yeah, yeah sure. It. I don't want to yeah. talk about it. Okay. So my okay. recommendation uh, is is to continue this. Would you like us to continue this application for next week or next month? That'll put this up at the top of the uh, agenda for you. Yeah. If if the gentleman who was talking about the windows could give me his name and his phone number, I'll call him. Sure. It's Rob Abner, A B N E R, six one four. Streamed live, so if you want, I you can email staff and we can pass that information on. It's just whatever okay, you're good. comfortable with. That'd yeah, good point. Better. Good point. Yep. It might be great advertising for him. Yeah. <laughs> Rob, 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 I would be just, happy to meet with anybody in the village. <laughs> yeah. I'll send that to Jacqueline, and Jacqueline will send it to me. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you. All right. So, so just to make sure we're we're above board here. Uh, so, for the applicant, you're you're requesting that we continue the application, correct? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. I think we have right. to. I think we have to. Okay. Is there a motion? Mr. Chairman, I move to uh, continue. Uh, the number 15 GV-21-05-039. Next meeting. Second. There is a second there. Any questions on the motion? Uh, if there are no objections. Hearing none, motion passes. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you. All right. Uh, moving ahead to item 16, GV-21-05-040. Uh, alpha. Uh, and there's also a Bravo. Do we have an applicant here for 780 South Lazelle Street? Yes, we do. All right. I heard the voice. I'm looking for the video. There we go. Mr. Sampson uh, was already sworn in, so let the record show that Ms. Sampson is still on the record. Jacqueline. Okay, this application uh, is proposing uh, exterior alterations and new construction. So the exterior alterations would involve the siding, the roof, some of the interior, the doors and the windows, and the new construction would be for the new addition. Uh, specifically to construct a one and a half story addition at the south side of the rear elevation, which is the interior of the lot. The south face of the addition is stepped back from the existing south elevation uh, to break up the length and scale and to allow window openings per the fire code. The addition siding would be one by 12 vertical ton and groove mill saw and boards painted to match the existing. The addition windows would be Marvin Ultimate Generation 2 aluminum clad putty mullion profile to match the dimensions of the existing window mullions and the proposed 16 foot wide glass overhead door at the gym facing the rear property line. The overhead door company model is 511 and the finish is dark bronze. The addition roofing gutter and downspouts would match the primary structure and the exposed top of the CMU foundation wall is to be split face block overfields design block. Uh, the color is to be charcoal 2202. So at the April business meeting, the commission asked to emphasize the existing condition variances and ask for more information about the proposed storm windows and about past gauge size approvals. So the gauge size for a past application that staff found for an application GV 20-08-035 at 566 South 4th Street was approved to be 24 inches, which also happens to match the gauge size recommended by staff or staff approved metal standing seam roof applications. Uh, staff does recommend uh, differentiating the siding, which may help to differentiate the addition from the historic structure. And then we also have conceptual review comments when this was previously reviewed as a demolition included in the staff report. The staff recommended recommendation is approval of any clarifications to be submitted to staff, and that is based on the standards for new construction, specifically letter A. Thank you, Jacqueline. Mr. Sampson, anything else to add? Um, yeah, I think that uh, there's just a couple of notes that I want to add. Um, in the application um, description of work, I think for the new roof uh, 
I noted 16 inches between the standing seams, and I think the intent is 18 inches, um, just as a clarification. Um, the second part is, oh, the garage door. Um, we are proposing to keep the out-to-out -out garage door size just with a custom single door. So instead of uh, enlarging that opening to 18 feet, we're gonna keep it at like 16.6, which it is now. Um, and all of these things, you know, from their comments uh, from the commission at last meeting, um, we went back and, uh, you know, our goal is to preserve the existing uh, historic structure uh, and the exterior uh, and footprint uh, and just have the um, addition as the new proposed. There's a lot of structural work that needs to happen uh, in the building to sort of bring it up to code and make it, uh, I guess, structurally solid. Uh, we had the structural engineer uh, clarify his uh, previous letter just with um, member sizes that would be required uh, or, or reinforcing uh, for this structure. And that is basically the shell of the existing barn, um, which is included in the application. Uh, I think that a couple of other changes that we made just from the previous application, besides keeping that existing uh, shell of the barn structure, is we're proposing to keep the existing windows and window locations uh, on the facade, uh, proposing to keep the existing front door. Um, we are proposing to install new uh, skylights in uh, new proposed locations. Um, on the house, on the, I guess, the Lizelle uh, roof faith, um, just to, uh, the, the ones that are there now uh, are not original, but they're old and they're cracked and they need replaced. Um, we also stepped back the addition three feet, as Jacqueline said, and then they shed dormer on top for the sort of second story or uh, story and a half. We stepped back from the south facade of the addition, an additional uh, foot, uh, just to break that that lineup where I think we had aligned it previously, just to help scale that addition a little bit more. It's on the interior side of the lot, but there's that portion of the adjacent lot is empty, so you can see some of that. Um, for the storm windows, you know, right now the existing windows that are there have, you know, a wood and glass storm window in them um, and looking through the uh, storm window options available to us you know our you know what we're we're leaning towards now is simply recreating or reusing those existing storm windows so it's a painted wood with fixed glass it's an older style um, storm window but i think at this point we'd want to carry that through since we're keeping the existing windows um, as far as the siding, the siding in addition, we were proposing to match the original structure. I think with the with the work that's going on inside, we've proposed a new structural skeleton inside so we can maintain uh, those existing walls as much as possible. I mean, anything that would get uh, removed for structural work would be salvaged and uh, reinstalled uh, as far as that siding is concerned on the barn. Um, yeah, so I don't know. I'm open to questions. All right, thank you. Uh, commission questions, comments. What, what is the spacing on the existing roof? Are you replacing the existing roof? Yeah, it, it's an asphalt shingle roof right now. Oh, okay. So it's all going to be 18 inches center to center. Mm -hmm. We want to do a wider gauge that's more historical gauge uh, or um, spacing of the ribs. Um, and with the size of this roof, we just, you know, that's kind of the, the larger size that we can get. We'll have to go to a heavier gauge so it doesn't oil can. Yeah. But at the same time, I think the scale is probably right for the building. Yeah, yeah, I have no problem with that. I just wondered, yeah, she answered my question. Thank you. I, and I have no problem with the skylights in the front. You got skylights in the front now. I don't think anybody's going to remember where they're at and compared to where the new ones are when you're done. Can 
can you uh, go over what the storms are going to look like again? I don't know. Is there a picture somewhere? Um, I can I can provide one. I've got there are uh, pictures of the exterior, but they're not up close uh, to those. It's like an inch and a half sash with a fixed window in them uh, or fixed pane of glass. It's they're basically an old style of storm, like before, you know, the aluminum oh. extruded ones. Oh, it's so like um, the 1940s when you had to store them in your basement. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yep. I still have those. Yeah. I remember as a kid changing them. Any other questions or comments? I think it's pretty straightforward and pretty simple and pretty true. I, I appreciate the applicants. Provisions, I think, really addressing our our comments from the business meetings. All right. If there are no other questions or comments, is there a motion? Item GV twenty one oh five oh four oh A. I move to approve as submitted. Second. Is there any questions on the motion? We'll take the vote, Commissioner Panzer. Aye. Mr. Durst? Aye. Mr. Thiel? Aye. Mr. Ferriel? Aye. Mr. Foley? Aye. Chair votes aye as well. Ayes have it. Motion passes. And then we have item Bravo, which is the variance recommendations. Um, I don't think we need to read that in GV-21-05-040 Bravo. Uh, it looks like there are a series of four uh, recommendations. Uh, front yard setback. Retain the existing uh, minimum side yard north corner lot, which is an existing minimum side yard south is new, I believe, and the combined side yard, which is existing. And um, our application, go ahead. Just as a summary, you know, with the previous design, uh, we had set back the south side and in keeping the existing footprint, we had to add back in that south yard side yard setback but all of the requested variances are for um existing non-conforming conditions of the original barn footprint the addition the coverage everything else uh in rear yard uh are within zoning uh code guidelines so so to clarify the the item for the south isn't noted as, as retain existing here but you're saying it is actually yeah. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay. yeah. Yeah. I don't know how it couldn't be. Yeah. 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 Um, item GV twenty one oh five oh four oh B. I move to uh, recommend the variances. Second. Do we need to read, we need to read those in? Uh, front yard setback retain existing minus nine point six two five inches to minus ten point seven five inches. Minimum side yard north corner of lot section three 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 two point two two retain existing side yard setback point one inch. Minimum side yard south section three 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 two point two six proposed setback is three point oh three, which is less than five feet. Combined side yard section three 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 two point two five retaining existing combined side yard of three point three zero three feet. Thank you very much. Any questions on the motion? I'll go ahead and take the vote. Commissioner Panzer? Aye. Commissioner Durst? Aye. Commissioner Thiel? Aye. Commissioner Ferriel? Aye. Commissioner Foley? Yes. Aye. Uh, chair votes aye as well. Uh, the recommendations are approved. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Uh, moving before we get the conceptuals, let's just take one quick back. Uh, item 10, uh, GV. Dash two one dash oh five oh three four seven nine two South Third Street. Do we have Mr. Thomas or somebody else for seven nine two South Third Street? Okay, we'll jump ahead to the conceptual reviews. Uh, item seventeen GV dash two one dash oh five dash zero four one five seven nine South Grant. Yes, Tyler Graham with Bella Jardino. I see Mr. Graham, please raise your right hand. Do you the swear whole, to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth? I do. Oh, thank you very much. So before Jacqueline gets started, um, the homeowners actually decided to walk from this job. 
so we can remove this application, but I at least wanted you all to advance your business schedule. So. Well, thank you very much. We can go ahead and remove it. All right, thank you. Thank you for letting us know. All right, uh, we'll go ahead and uh, jump on to item 18, GV-21-05-042, 304 East Cosleth Street. We have an applicant here for 304 East Cossus, Cossuth Street. <clears throat> yes, you do, Joe Tanner. All right, uh, I heard your voice. My wife, I might, my looking. wife might be joining here in a second, but uh, you can go ahead and swear me in. Yeah, we'll swear you in. If she shows up, we'll swear her in as well. Please raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, <laughs> nothing but the truth? Yes. And please state your name for the record. Uh, Joseph Tanner. Thank you very much. Jacqueline. Okay, so this is a conceptual application and the proposed work is seeking a conceptual review to inform the decision to pursue either rehabilitation of the existing historic garage structure, demolition with the existing parking pad to remain, or demolition followed by construction of a new garage. So at the April business meeting, the commission noted that rehabilitation would be the best op option but that uh, the commission can have the conversation about the options at the hearing since the application is conceptual. The commission thought this property might have had a lot addition or similar in the recent past. So no zone information may be helpful in determining what could be put back after the demolition. So we're now providing feedback so it's required. Thank you very much. Does the applicant have anything to add? <clears throat> Yeah, um, my wife and I were sort of hoping to focus um, on the third option and and the uh, going down the route of building a new garage. Um, we're, um, as you can imagine, a little concerned about the Giant Eagle development, um, which is directly across from us. Um, right now, we utilize the on-street parking and um, we have two cars, we have a little 16 month daughter, and we would really, really like to have sort of a functional garage that we can actually use. And um, so um, that's sort of all I'd like to add at the moment. Okay. All right, uh, questions, comments from the commission, um, specifically around the potential for demolition and what can go back there. Well, I, I I went over and looked at it. I can't tell whether it's demolishable or not, whether it warrants it. Um, it's pretty square. It's got some slopes to it. Um, I it may be held up by what's in it. I'm not <laughs> sure, but um, well, that's probably the case. Sorry, yeah, Sorry I, yeah. I'd still like somebody else to take a look at it. Um, and I think it's pretty close to the west property line. So I'm not sure that if this is salvageable or reusable, that they could not attach something to it um, and get their two car garage out of it that way. So I'm, I am still open to um, pursuing keeping this unless it's proved otherwise and adding something to it to make it a two car garage. And, and that, and I'm sorry, if I should hold off on comments, but um, could you elaborate, I guess, how, how it could be, um, could remain and also um, get the, the second car garage. Um, Macon Alley, north of Sycamore, um, second house up, existing garage, and they added a second garage addition to it to make it a two car. What what address for Macon Alley, just north just of Sycamore? Yeah, I think. I mean, I'm always in favor of keeping contributing structures whenever possible. So, I mean. That's yeah. when, and we've 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 beat up lots of garages in this mission, and it's one of those things that I agree on. Would it be possible, uh, whoever you get, a structural engineer, or whatever, to look at your garage to give it a good assessment to be able to clear some space for that person to actually get a good look? <laughs> we we don't want a report that says I went in there, but I can't really assess it because I couldn't see any of the structure. <laughs> and and, I, and it really needs to be a structural engineer that. Is pro historic preservation that would say to us, "Hey, I'm I'm for historic preservation. This is a lost cause." Right. Like, what the heck have the creds? Right. We've had other the, ones that have come in and they're 
all for tearing it down and they write a report accordingly. So so you want a report that states what needs to be done to retain the garage. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Teresa. Yeah, thank you. And, mm -hmm. and again, I, I think my wife's joining here. If you guys don't mind, could you? Sure. Just look in if she could please raise her right hand. I can bring it close to you guys so I can see your hand. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth? I do. And please state your name for the record. Alana Tannery. Thank you. All right. Now you're sworn in. You can say whatever you want. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, um, Alana, we we're just talking about the the potential for building a new garage, and one of the things that they would like to see is, is a structural engineer, correct? To see uh, exactly in what condition it is, or well, whether it's salvageable. Um, I guess my my only question is if they do say it's salvageable, to what extent, you know, is the commission open? It, you know, I tried to send, um, show a lot of photos of our street and our garage really, it sticks out like a sore thumb. Um, almost all the garages are, are newer garages and we totally respect and, you know, the German village philosophy for, you know, architecture and trying to maintain historic structures. Um, but I guess maybe that conversation will come further down the road, but even if it is, I guess, salvageable or structurally, it could survive. Um, I guess what would the outlook be for, for still getting an approval of an, of a new structure given sort of the surrounding circumstances. So typically, typically if, if there's not a, a imminent collapse or a structural deficiency or reason why it can't be salvaged um, or, or repaired or restored or restored. Um, we typically don't allow demolitions, especially specifically if it is a contributing structure, if it's a historic structure, um, if it was a dilapidated structure built in the 1970s, that that's a whole different conversation. But obviously mm -hmm. this is, this is an older structure. It's probably one of the, the older, garages in that area it's definitely has some some longevity uh historically uh and if you go back to the sandborn maps which jacqueline can can help you look up there's probably it shows up uh in those maps prior to 1950 um so that, that that's kind of the hurdle to overcome if you can prove that it's not historical then the next step is is it is, is it going to fall down basically and it can't be can't be fixed that's kind of the hurdle you got to get past and, and barring that is, is kind of where we're at. Let me ask this too, because it's come up more and more with the development going in across the street from us with the giant eagle building. Huh? So another thing we do want is functionality because we would like to be able to use it in the circumstance that we probably won't have parking. Right mm -hmm. now, you couldn't really get a car in there. Um, so that's another thing that we've had on our mind as well, given that we might not be able to park on our street anymore once the new development goes up. I think part of that conversation goes goes to uh, as you come back, uh, documenting the 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 width of the garage door. Uh, right now we have his photos to go by, but if you can get the dimensions of the garage door, uh, I'm not saying yay or nay to it, but there's options of do we do we op widen the opening to make it usable. Um, there's what we talked about previously before you came on, um, the option of adding an addition to the side of the garage, or or there's there's examples of adding depth to garages. Um, looking at your lot, I, we can't tell how wide the lot is, how much space is there, so kind of getting measurements of what that lot looks like. Um, if 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 you do happen to get it torn down, if it is if it's on the edge of your lot, you're going to have to probably put it back set away from the side of your lot so your lot width will have determinations of how big something could be right there, there's a couple considerations there of and course, i, I of recommend course. that there's a uh, existing garage that had an addition put on it make an alley just north of sycamore yeah i wrote i, I wrote that that down we'll have to check that out yeah take and, a look. and that mm -hmm. good we're, we're not unsympathetic to your your challenges for parking um yeah. we're just as a commission we're driven to 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 enforce the standards and if we were to 
if you were to continue down a path and you still wanted it demolished, there would be a, and we denied it, there would be a process for appeal, et cetera. But for us, our, our role here is to um, to enforce the standards. And if the is a contributing structure and it is structurally salvageable, we're we're we're, we're called to to try to save it. Um, but we yeah. will work with you to work on additions and things like that if that comes to that phase as well. Yeah, I, I really appreciate it. And this is probably a really stupid question because I think um, maybe you're not able to do it. But um, I guess we're sort of looking for direction as far as other examples. And you've given one, you know, make an alley just north of Sycamore to look at that. But also sort of uh, professionals that might be able to sort of guide us. And it, is it true that you're not really able to provide any names or is uh, you could look at the uh, the applicants that there was yeah. a couple on here that were uh, <laughs> on here today that do that are in front of us a lot. Um, there, there's, there's. I think that'd be a great. I think Jackie could provide you a list. I'm, of, I'm of the, the regulars. I'm sure if you asked for an application on a specific site address, that Jacqueline would provide it with you, and that that just might give you the information you're looking for. <laughs> Looking at past agendas too can help see what you know similar types of applications yeah. or you know similar people that, who have that, come before us before who are and, experienced with coming. The, Jack, that would folks, be fantastic. We'd really and appreciate the folks that, at the so. society could probably tell you very quickly who the architects who are frequently appearing in front of the commission would have and, and Jeff, are. actually, if they contacted the person at the society, they could give you the name. Yep. Yeah. Okay. They'll Fantastic. be reluctant to make a recommendation, but they'll tell you who is who are, free, who are frequent flyers. Right, right, right. Okay. And I'll, and I'll give you one more option out there. And, and again, it's not a final option or anything like that, but it looks like you may have room for a parking pad and, and putting a, a gate on that fence short term uh, to get you somewhere. That could be something you could you could come to the commission for to at least get parking to get a second car in there. Again, knowing the situation coming across the street, just trying to give you options to get you something as you go down this path before the commission. Hey, nothing's settled across the street yet. Correct. I, lo I love that attitude, Ned. I love that. <laughs> so is there any other information you want from us uh, while you have us here at the, at the meeting? Um, I guess one other, one other question is, I think this is, pro I could probably pose this to Jacqueline, but if we were to, to rehab it, uh, is there an approved list of, of siding materials or it's wood right now, would siding even be permitted? So generally speaking, um, wood has historically been the preferred option because that is what has been in the village for years. Uh, don't, no vinyl, uh, no, no, no uh, aluminum siding. Um, we had done a lot of test cases with hardy board or hardy um, siding. And that's pretty much come back overwhelmingly negative. Uh, so if you're looking for an alternative material, um, boral siding, we've seen success with that. Um, but uh, yeah, wood, wood is pretty much a slam dunk. Uh, boral we've seen success with. And then there's other materials out there, but we don't typically see many more than that. I think one of the things that would have to be uh, looked at is that the profile of the siding would want to match the profile of the existing siding that's there. So if it's a so four inch or to make sure you're sticking with four inch replacements, if it's a, a, a Dutch lap versus yeah, a, it looks like some kind of a V groove or something. It, it's tough to tell from the photographs, but there are some of the, of the more modern material, the Boral for one um, siding does come in a variety of different pro profiles, one of which might match the existing profile. And then fi fi final question, I guess, is is the garage door, if if we're if the structure is going to remain like it is now, I mean, are there options that come to mind where this could be uh, um, an electric garage that could oh, be open? Yeah. 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 Absolutely. <laughs> yes. We'd like to put a, a regular garage or a more traditional garage door in. Yeah. Okay, great, great, great. Uh, okay. we, 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 we would love to have the the... the by the, uh, the the hinge doors, but we understand overhead garage doors is what's out there. So yeah, yeah. What? Well, yeah. Do you want to ask? Oh, that? I was just going to ask if, as as part of this, um, as you can see, the fence is kind of deteriorating too. So if we were to do the project, 
um, would we have to submit a separate application to, you know, update that fence around there as well, or would it? You could put that on the same application. Uh, you could put it on a separate application and get that pushed through, if regardless of what you do with the garage. So how you apply to that, Jacqueline can help you kind of craft how you want to yeah. do that. But uh, fencing replacements happen all the time. That's a lot easier than than a garage <laughs> teardown for sure. Got it. Well, thank thank you guys a lot. I really appreciate the feedback. It was very sure. helpful. All right. Thanks for coming to us. We're always happy to do any as many concepts as you'd like. We're happy to entertain those. Great, thank you. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, before we move on to the next item, I'm afraid I'm gonna have to leave. I've got a uh, class session at seven uh, to review okay. some material with my students before their okay. exam on Thursday morning. All right, so thank you very much. see you all uh, in a couple of weeks. We'll see you, Jeff. Thank you, Jeff. All right, uh, uh, moving ahead to item 19, GV-21-05043, 31 East Cothus. East Casa Street. Uh, Mr. Collins, I think I see you there. Yep. Can you please raise your right hand. Other right hand. There we go. Do you swear to tell the truth, <laughs> the whole truth, nothing but the truth? I do. And please state your name for the record. Brian Collins. Thank you very much. Jacqueline? Yes, good. Jacqueline, you there? I think you muted. Sorry about that. You good? <laughs> okay, so this is another conceptual application. Uh, they are seeking conceptual review for the possibility of adding a covered side porch to the existing residence. Uh, zoning variances that would be needed include encroachment on the 10 foot front yard building setback. Uh, the existing building sits on the property line, and the proposed side porch would sit back 5 feet 2 inches as well as reduction of 20% of the required side yards, the width reduced from the required 9.37 feet to proposed 5.4 feet 3 inches, exceeding the 50% maximum lot coverage. The existing built building lot coverage is 51.4% and already exceeds the 50% maximum. The proposed covered porch would increase the lot coverage to 56.5%. This is conceptual, so no action is required. I'm just looking for feedback. Alrighty, Mr. Collins, anything else to add? No, no, we're just coming before you before starting down the path of asking for zoning variances to kind of make sure we understand the commission's feelings on a side porch. Um, the owners are simply looking to have some outdoor space that is covered uh, to you know, sit around, uh, you know, entertain at, uh, you know, is the goal in the project. Okay. Questions, comments from the commission? I mean, I think the fact that they're not covering any windows with doors up. There will be porch. one. There is one door that'll be inside the porch. So there's an existing yeah. side door that would be the entrance from the house to the porch. So we wouldn't be creating any new openings. The yeah, window that, that. Yeah, I mean, that makes sense to me. I mean, that that would be one of my first concerns is what are you covering up? <laughs> Nothing that's significant and that, that architecturally um, significant. So the we i threw together some uh elevations late and i forwarded them on to jackie i don't know if she got them into the queue but we were uh kind of thinking that this would be a flat roof structure similar to the uh structure that's at on south third it's a 689 south third um and you know basically kind of trying to tuck in and not block any the second story windows would be out of play this the first floor window to the front would be out of play um the the owners did ask me i guess the option of screening it versus not screening it was one question uh, i guess your opinion on that they did not look to make this like a three seasons or anything like that so they weren't interested in um you know in closing it they, they were simply looking at screening it for bugs um as an option as to whether or not there was any feelings pro or con on that so i Going at fifty six percent makes me for, for for porch makes me cringe a little bit. It it is locationally it it's I think really good. Um, screening it 
bothers me just because of the of the solidity that you know even a screen gives to the mass. Um, you know the the without without screens it tends to be really transparent and quite light and even putting screens in is it, it changes the character of it significantly. Typically, we okay. do not approve screens where or screen in porches where they're as visible as this is. If it were truly a backyard, that you know, was kind of visible from the public way, it becomes a different process. Right. And that was kind of why we were asking the question, because this would be, you know, pretty close to the property line. It's set five feet back. The house sits on the property line. So it is sitting back from the front line of the house, but it's still going to be pretty visible from the street. So how hard would it be to get it down to 54.9% lot coverage? I think it, if we start doing that, it's going to make it so it's not super usable. So because we're trying to grab that back door, like to so that you're coming out into it without having to create a new opening. Um, I could kind of mess around with the size to see what that would do. But um, like right now, that back door and then there's a step down to the back patio area, which you can see on the site plan. They, they have a an outdoor patio area. Um, you're trying to maintain that. It's just trying to get a usable seating group in there. It's not a very big seating group as it is. Like we're getting yeah. a we're getting a usable area that's probably about nine by twelve. So trying to reduce the square footage. I, I guess I could pull the back line of the porch back a little bit. That's just making it asymmetrical on the building right now. It's just sitting back the same from the front side as it is from the back side. But I and, guess and I think look. and I think pulling away from that front window would improve it. Further away from the front window. Yeah, yeah it's it's really close to that window. Yeah, it is. I don't think anyone would notice that it's not symmetrical. OK, I, we, I can take a look at it. There is a, there's definitely a little bit of square footage to give to the um to the back by that where that door goes into the kitchen um there's not i guess the there's not a ton to give to the front by the window because it's basically the area that starts from the door to the window that's going to be the usable area of the porch so um but we could probably pull it back a hair um and get it a little further off right now if you look at the elevations the window's kind of sketched in there it's it's trying to um it's it's i guess it's trying to get up you know basically above it so that the the um actually wait i can get the I'll, I'll sketch the window in there it's not in there on that on that one that we submit but it's it's above the window so um it's coming into the side of it and the window right now it's a stucco window so there is no trim on the window so uh basically it's inset into the into the wall that wall is like a 14 inch thick wall so but right now the the uh, the roof overhang is going to come up over that window correct yeah like it would probably the window's got an arch top and it's probably going to overlap it you know by a little, little bit i could again if, if that's a problem i guess we could try to step it back the overhang right now we're, we're looking at like a 10 inch overhang yeah uh, I, or i guess it's like an eight inch overhang so i i inch. would think that that would be the degree to which you'd want to look at stepping that back so that that um the roof and the gutter did not Assume there's a gun on it. I just did not overhang that window. Okay, let's take a look at that. That's that's easy enough to kind of mess around with. Like, like my guess is if we pull back by about a foot, then we're we're probably off of it. That picture that's currently up there now kind of shows that window where it doesn't have any trim around it. It's been set into yeah. the stucco. Okay. So on the variances, then I just I guess if we can't get below the fifty five, is that going to be a deal breaker? I mean, we I guess I, we can try to squeeze the size of it, but giving up too much space to the front side um, makes the space less usable, and then I can't go past the door on the back side, trying to keep that door inside um, the porch. So there there are going to be limitations, I guess, as to how much we can take it down. I don't think we can give much in the current width of it it's all it's under 10 feet right now um from the building to the outside of it i i would say if you get up below 55 you'll get a better reception okay all right let's see what we can do i'm not exactly sure what that translates into and in is into a square footage number 
Okay. All right. Any other questions for us? So the process for getting onto the agenda for approval for next um, the next meeting. So let's reach out to, to Jacqueline. Uh, Jacqueline, will this be a, a new application or will it just be a continuation of this as a conceptual to new? That's what I use. This would be a new application. So this is not continued okay. just for conceptual feedback. So those same uh, deadlines would still apply. Yep. So that, is, that, is that like tomorrow? I believe so. I believe tomorrow the 5th is the deadline. Okay. I'm assuming that you, for, for the variance approval, as opposed to the approval for the design of the porch itself, because it would be split apart anyways, that uh, you're not going to need much more than what you're seeing now, just addressing the concerns that you've brought up. I guess that's a question. So, State the question again. Sorry. In looking to, I guess there's a two part thing here. We're looking to get your approval for, or I guess the the okay to for for the city for the zoning part, and then your the design of the porch is a separate thing. I get I get that I have to get your certificate of appropriateness for the for the building of the porch, but the the zoning they don't care about me pulling a permit. They want to, they want to know whether or not you guys are approving or disapproving of the variance requests. So in order to go for the variance request portion of it, because that's a longer timeline to get into them, do I need to submit anything more drawing wise than what you're seeing, save re revising them and, and you know, getting them to address the, the concerns that you've brought up? But I think that we got to get the, the, like you said, the concerns that we have. Um, typically, we, we do the variances at the same time we're doing the architecture. We don't okay. approve variances until we get architecture we can approve. Okay. Um, so it'd be best to have it all at once. Um, okay, bar some other circumstance. Yeah. No, that's fine. Okay. Sounds good. Anything else? No. Thank you. All right. Appreciate the time. All right. Have a good, good evening. Right. Moving ahead. Uh, item number 20. GB-21-05-044, 792 South 3rd Street. We have an applicant for 792 South 3rd Street. Yeah. Anthony, this is the same address and applicant as the landscaping way up at the top of the agenda. I thought I saw this applicant pop on, actually. Hi, yes, I'm here. There we go. All right. Uh, could you please raise your right hand? You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I do. And please state your name for the record. Uh, my name is Curtis Thomas. Okay. Uh, let's go ahead and do uh, the the, original, the first application, item 10, uh, GV-21-05-034, which is new landscape hardscape. Uh, Jacqueline, do you want to read that one out? Sure. I'm just going to step back here. Okay. Okay. So this application is proposing. Oh, wait. This might not be the correct one. Let's see. What number is that? 34. Okay. Here we go. So this application is proposing to install new flower beds, a new path to the utility unit, and a small tree to the front garden, as well as removing existing shrubs and grass to achieve a cottage flower garden. The applicant would like to install a patio in the back garden to consist of about a 9 by 12 foot rectangular space made of pavers or flagstone. So the April business meeting, the commission requested a landscape plan and confirmation that the patio will have a permeable, permeable base. And staff does recommend that the application be continued to allow the applicant time to submit the landscape sketch and plan. And the basis for this is on this recommendation is for the German German Village guidelines, the summary of submission materials on pages 26 to 27. All right. Uh, anything applicant of anything else to add, Ms. Thomas? 
Uh, well, I, I, I did talk with uh, a representative of a city and um, she said that she that they weren't really concerned with what they call soft scape, which would be um, flower beds and uh, rose bushes and that sort of thing. Um, I guess I guess the patio, the which would be a hardscape, I guess, um, is is what what this uh, application is about. Am I correct on that? Yeah, it'd be the the hardscape and and any walks that you may have. Right. Uh, right. So we'd, we'd be looking for a lot plan showing where this stuff is happening on the lot. Right now, we just have some photos and no no point of reference. Okay, um, so I, I'm dealing with uh, uh, Mr. Griner, uh, his landscaping business. So if he would, um, I, I guess you're asking that he uh, draw something up for that. Yep, just a, just a sketch of the property and then show okay. kind of where things are. What's going to be the planting bed? What's going to be the paver, paving that kind of stuff? Got it. Okay. And then for for our purposes, the big thing is is a permeable base. We don't want to have a concrete base under pavers. Uh, and just kind of see where it all sits. Can 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 you def, can you define permeable base, permeable base, please? Yeah. So a, a sand sand bed typically is what's used okay. on the pavers. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. Okay. We've had several it. projects where we've approved patio paver patios, and they pour a concrete slab under the under the pavers, and that's a problem. Yeah, that's yeah. an issue. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So, so if you're going to go back to to the landscape design that you're working with um, and have them provide the sketch, uh, I'd recommend that we continue the application as Jacqueline mentioned. That'll take this application and put it at the top of of uh, next week's agenda, next month's agenda, I should say. Yeah, gotcha. Thank you. All right. So we'll we'll make a motion on this to continue, and then we'll go down to your conceptual review that we have down below. Thank so you very for, much. I appreciate that. No problem. So, uh, Mr. Is there motion? Mr. Chairman, on item GB 21050347297292 South 3rd Street, I move to continue. Is there a second? second. All right, Commissioner, seconded. Uh, any questions on the motion? If there are no objections, hearing no objections, motion passes. We'll move on down to item. Uh, and item 20, GV-21-05-044, conceptual review at 792 South 3rd Street. Let the record show Mr. Thomas is still sworn in. Uh, Jacqueline, do you want to read through that? Yes. Yeah, so this is a conceptual application. Uh, the proposed work is to add dormer windows on the front part of the house to make the upstairs attic into a bedroom in keeping with the neighboring house. The dormer would add natural light and headspace in the bedroom. Although very close to the neighbor, the dormer would face a blank brick wall of the neighboring home. The materials would be wood to match the existing siding of the house and painted the same color as the trim. The applicant would also like to build a Four Seasons room on the existing back deck to serve as an office space. The room would be in the footprint of both walls of the house, and the room would be a glass house with a longer wall to be 9 or 12 light windows or a narrow, narrow doors that could be that could open to allow fresh air. The roof of the Four Seasons room would be matched as close to existing as possible in material and color. An exterior would be wood frame painted the same color as the trim on the house, and the addition will not be visible from the street. So at the April business meeting, the commission requested context photos of the home, an aerial image, and a marked up photo of the location of the room on the deck, and preliminary feedback regarding uh, any fire code. All right, uh, Mr. Thomas, anything to add? No, I think that I think that summarizes it very well. Thank you. So being conceptual, there's there's no action for us to take. Are there any questions you have of us? Is, is what Jacqueline mentioned what we need for the application straightforward? Well, I don't know that I could do an aerial photo. So we've got the, the Google Map aerial photo. Um, okay. What we would need to understand, again, it goes back to the site, um, a sketch of the site showing where this exists. Um, we do have a photo in your packet. Um, showing it a deck, um, but no context of where that deck is in relation to the rest of the site. Um, okay. So that's where the, the site plan site sketch would come into play. Okay. Um, so this photo here on the screen 
is that the intent is to do the extent of that four seasons room on top of the existing deck? Exactly. Yes. Does the deck have a foundation? Well, the deck does not, to my knowledge, have a foundation. So I would imagine um, that the deck would actually have to be taken out. It's not original to the house. Um, it would probably have to be taken out and there would have to be a proper foundation put down there would be. I'm assuming concrete or something. Um, I mean, otherwise it's just building right on top of um, soil, which that that's that's not appropriate. And another piece of, of with the site, um, if you're putting a four seasons room on, I believe that adds to the square footage of the house. So we it probably would. need to understand what the lot coverage is at that point. So how much square footage your house and, and the four seasons room combined is taken up on your total lot. Uh, typically 50% is that threshold we're looking at. Um, if you go beyond 50%, um, I believe that requires uh, a variance, um, which is a whole separate process. Um, we okay. want to know kind of architecturally what you're looking at as far as this goes, height, dimensions, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I guess my and and please, I'm I'm not trying to be obtuse. Uh, please forgive my ignorance. I'm I'm a microbiologist. I don't know anything about this. Um, basically, I need to get an architect in here to draw this up and present it to you correctly. My question is, should I even? I don't want to waste the money on that if the answer is going to be a good hard no. Uh, if if the answer is going to be a maybe, then I'd like to pursue with it. You see what I mean? I would say from a commission, I think for the commission to to give you a, a, a maybe, I don't uh -huh. think we're opposed as a commission to a Four Seasons room. Okay. What we identified as lot coverage and that kind of stuff, we need to understand what that looks like. So I Absolutely. think there's some stuff you can do that doesn't require an architect, some preliminary information okay. together. Um, okay. And you can bring that back to another conceptual if you'd like. That's no problem. Okay. Uh, before you engage an architect. Uh, but I, I think as a concept, I don't think there's there'll be much pushback and other commissioners let me know if I'm speaking out of turn here, but I don't think there's heartache about that. I, my only concern is I think you're going to need an architect to, to to do an investigation code wise on those dormers you want to put on the south side. OK, you got real problems over there. You're so close to that house. OK. Oh, there it is. All right, thank you. And we typically, when it comes down to those dormers, um, like like Ben said, an architect to, to go through the code issues that may be a, a, with it. Um, we need to know size of the dormer, what you're doing with that. Um, sure, right. So, yeah, you don't need to come back with a full set of architects' plans, but I think that you need to have some preliminary investigation by a, by a qualified architect. Yeah. To look at at these things, so I I I don't think that there's any way that we can really look at these things without some uh you can evaluate these things without some hard information there's no conceptual disagreement with the idea of being able to do these things but the the practicality of them is something that only that uh, professionals really get to be able to tell you and Understood. and your existing roof material if it's late may affect a dormer it, it, it it is not slate. It's actually okay. it's it's some sort of a composite. It's not like tar paper or anything like that. It's a it's a composite of some kind. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. So I yeah, I don't know. I, that I, I I couldn't. I didn't notice that when I was over there the other day. You were over at my house the other day. <laughs> <laughs> I took pictures. <laughs> know that you only get a foot distance between you and you and your neighbor. <laughs> Ned creeping again. Yeah. <laughs> diligence. In daylight. Diligence, Anthony. In daylight. In daylight. So, so, Mr. Thomas, is there any other questions you have for us that we can answer uh, for I, you? I, I don't, but thank you so much for your for taking your time. I appreciate it. Sure. All right. Well, thanks for stopping by. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, we'll move on to the next item. Uh, 21 GB-21-05-045-253 Lansing Street. We have applicants for two five three Lansing Street. Yes. I heard a yes. 
I'm looking for a face. Hello. <laughs> there we go. I see your face. Please raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. And please state your name for the record. Sarah Ahern. Thank you, Ms. Ahern. Uh, Jacqueline. Hey, this is a conceptual application. Uh, the application is proposing to construct a two story carriage house. The first floor would comprise of a two car garage and storage space, and the second floor would comprise of a bed sitting room apartment. The carriage house will be constructed approximately 20 feet to the rear of the existing residence and have a footprint of 600 square feet and be offset from the existing rear alley in line with the face of the adjacent structures. The exterior finishes uh, would be board and batten siding with trim to match the existing residence, and the new structure would follow the detailing of the existing residence and replicate the color scheme. So at the April business meeting, the commission asked about the lot width, uh, cautioning that a bathroom or a kitchen could be included, but not both, and asked if the second story plans were also available since the first story plans are included, and requested the applicant to or recommended the applicant ask for preliminary feedback from building and zoning regarding what variances may be needed. All right. Uh, and does Apton have anything else to add? Um, I have my architect here as well. John Mackay is on. I don't know. He might have something to add. All right, Mr. Mackay, if you please raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth? I don't have audio for you. Are you uh, muted? He should be unmuted. I did mute him earlier, though. I'm not hearing you. Get the uh, uh, option of calling in. Yeah, if you want to try calling with the phone, that could be an option. Call you number. Uh, Jacqueline, do you have a number to call in for this? Yeah, I will search for it real quick and then I will put it in the chat. Okay. Jack, I'll put it in the chat for you. Technology. <laughs> um, for sake of time, um, we can talk through whatever you like to talk through until we bring him on. Any questions you have or, or information you want from us? Um, no, no, I don't. Well, I'll, I'll just speak for myself. I think it, it, it sounds as easy as just choosing either a, a bathroom or a, a what was the other part of sink, but we can't do both. So choose either either or it doesn't matter. Correct. Typically, we, we, we go for a, a bathroom or a kitchen uh, is what we're we're looking not both. Great. Um, and then what would you anticipate we would um, what kind of was it variances um there's a garage going in a few doors down um and so is it typical that we would need variances or is it just something we need to check with i uh, need check with it um there's a whole slew of code requirements out there with the city setbacks you're, you're going to need variances okay. i mean an occupied space above a garage the height of the garage the height of this building is going to require variance it, i mean those are the starting points okay Mr. McKay, did you get the audio yet? Aside from that, you um, there aren't any other potential challenges you see as long as we get the first floor design, um, or seven, second floor design, excuse me, but the design itself is in alignment with the German village requirements. I think that's where we need to discuss next. Uh, I was hoping to get Mr. McKay on there um, to have the conversation. I didn't want to dig too deep in until he gets on. Um, but, John, if you want to call me on my phone, I think I could hold it up. <laughs> Try that. John nice is also it. my dad, so <laughs> I feel like I could say that to him. I think uh, so. The commission, we want to just kind of talk through design. Uh, at least talk to it and then we can kind of have a, a conversation after. So I would open up to the commission for comments on on the design as submitted. Exceptional. I, 
<laughs> Am I in now? Yes. You are. Ah, okay. You'll have to excuse me. I have a slight case of laryngitis, so <clears throat> I apologize up front. We'll talk through our, our comments on the design and so we don't got to talk too much and then we can have a conversation afterwards. I, I would just say what we usually ask for is to see a scaled drawing of the other adjacent garages, right? To kind of understand scale and massing. I know we've got the alley images, but it's nice to see them all together, right? An alley scape of both the, of both your side of the street and the adjacent side. They're asking the for elevation. You're, I'm sorry, you're asking for elevations, I assume. Not, yeah. Not plans. Correct. Correct. You're asking, asking basically for a streetscape of both exactly. sides. Exactly. That's exactly, exactly what we're asking for. Yeah. And it could both just be sides, silhouettes. Both sides of the alley. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Just just silhouettes. I, you can add. I mean, frequently people do it by doing a photo montage, where as long as the the elevations are correct. Okay. Yeah, we can do that. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. How far down the alley do you want us to go? All the way. Where is this? Where? You're looking. Um, it's, do you, I'm sorry, did you ask where it was, where the house is? No, uh, we're, we're looking down the alley to see how far this should be. It's a short alley. Yeah, that's the, the um, that I took the full alley. Um, the, there's, yeah, yeah. There are adjacent streets that are perpendicular. Yeah, the rough height of each of those, you know, helpful okay mm -hmm. we, yeah we can do that no problem that allows us to compare the massing to the adjacent stuff certainly i know i know for sure i know well, certainly not as high as the one that's in the lower right hand picture the, the gray one what structure is that sorry what structure is that building that's on the far right side of the alley uh, you mean the fifth picture, the one on the bottom right? Yeah. That's a uh, residential house on the corner of Jaeger and this alley. Okay, that's what I thought. Thanks, is Giant Eagle. That's, uh, yeah, right. that's the, the replication. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah, it's right across the road from Giant Eagle. In fact, yeah, Giant Eagle's to the right. Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. And the one in the center on the top line is the new flat roof. The uh, garage that's going in currently. Yeah, that I mean, the height of this is what concerns me. It, 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 it. it. Yeah, Jay, yeah. but with that house and then this other one that's going in, I'm not sure. You know, it's kind of, it's maybe seen, and it, it'd be oh. interesting to see what's on the other side too, though. Yeah. But there are um, there are two two story houses in the alley as well on the other side. Okay. Yeah, but a house is not a. I mean, that's right. what we're going to get into an interesting discussion about. A house is not a garage, and a garage is not a house. Um, so, so I, I don't mean to be facetious or confront you, but so what is a coach house? <laughs> Well, I mean, there are there are locations where carriage houses are are appropriate, and, and and this may be one of those. But the scale, what what's concerning me is when I look at this, I look at the height of the garage door, and the structure is three times the height of the garage door. There's there is what appears to be this by its its visual nature right now to me says this is a house and that is problematic and i i i don't know how to say it other than to say that it, that it, for me it's problematic i suggest that the gentleman to the left of us who has the flat roof and um, contemporary garage apartment that he's building is doing the same thing 
He's building an apartment above a two-story two garage, a two-story, uh, a two-car garage. He's, he's exempting himself, I would suggest, from the height requirements by putting on a flat roof. So that which is, the, the which discussion, is which, is that, total, which is totally out of out of context. And the discussion of that uh, application that was a very contentious application. Um, it was. It, it barely got by. Is, is my comment on that? Um, they did, as you said, to, to get the, the height requirement, um, to get a full stack of floor, they did go flat with the roof. Um, I, what, some of my concerns with the design is the house that is in, that this garage carriage house, call it what you will, uh, is behind is a very simple design house. The, the design presented on, on the elevations here, we've got multiple roof slopes we've got a chimney we've got a, a a cluster of different window fenestration openings um it's it's not subservient to the primary structure it's definitely more ornate than the primary structure I totally we're not agree. against an apartment on the second floor by any means that happens quite a bit um not a full rentable apartment um that's kind of where i'm at with it is the ornateness Right now, the design is just it overwhelms the primary structure. Well, first of all, <clears throat> excuse me, if you go back to the photographs, if you would, please. The garage on the third picture. We can reproduce that on two floors. So you're saying basically just take that garage, take a piece. If, if, if that's what there. the commission finds acceptable, yeah. I think you're you're gonna once you put a full floor in and you have that pitched roof on top, just sticking a roof on top of it is gonna put you into the height height issues. The thing will be lower than the far right side of the alley, low fifth picture. We currently have the garage doors that are six ten. So if you uh, multiply our garage doors are six ten to the top of the door. Eight, eight, <clears throat> excuse me. Sorry, eight feet to the top of the door, and eight feet wide. We can work out the, the uh, relationship of this. I think simplifying it. Uh, if I go back to the lower right-hand side picture again, I'm sure that his um, vocabulary on the windows is complementary to everybody around it. And I would suggest that we can do exactly what the gentleman's done with the flat roof and the two windows and the two garage doors. And quite simply, we, we felt that we were doing something that um, was making an architectural contextual statement. If we're not, I'll be quite happy to change it. So to you to use that fifth picture, the bottom right there, that's a primary residence. Huh? Build, building a garage, a, a carriage house, to mimic a primary residence is a whole different conversation. That's. I'll be happy to mimic the one to the left with the flat roof. And and you're within your rights to do that. I'm, I'm not going to say you can't do that. I, I just, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not looking to be confrontational. I'm just trying to find a, a, context, a, a vocabulary that we can both agree on. Mm -hmm. Is that flat? Roof, I'm saying that Mark's if, project. If, I'm or saying that, if the one, one on that? the second picture with the two doors and the two windows and the flat roof is is what the commission would find approvable, that serves which, our purpose. Which and, project was that, guys? Do you guys remember? That is that Mark Hours project? Yes, it was. Okay, so that was actually the most highly debated project uh, we've had in a long time, probably except the hotel. Uh, it took at least three or four meetings, just so you know the context of that particular oh, project. I, I don't doubt uh, it. Uh, and I believe I voted for that. Um, did we have a full forum that night, guys? Sure did. Yeah. yeah. So it that gives was, you the context. It yeah. was an extraordinarily close vote. And as Brent said, it, it went through several iterations before it got to a point where it could even squeak past. I'm not so. suggesting for a moment that we want to creep in and do something that doesn't Complement the German village and what German village stands for. My daughter, 
my daughter lives in, in there, and obviously we we want to compliment her residents. If you feel that we've gone over the top, then I respect that, and we will um, simplify this design to the point that works for the commission. I would suggest, however, that we keep going back to the height. Um, I can make sure that we meet the height requirements by bringing the building down. We currently have nine foot ceilings on the second floor, as an example. So that's, this thing is framed with rafters. It's not framed with trusses so that we can get higher exposed cathedral ceilings on the second floor. So there's an opportunity here to drop the whole roof line and reduce the walls around the perimeter to probably four feet. So the, the guidelines, and I'm going to come back to, to how we got, it's going to help you understand how we got to where we got on the other one. I believe new construction, there's three items that, three main items for a new construction that we look at. It's the massing, uh, the detailing, and the materials. And what we, the guidelines say is we like a new building to vary one, typically. Um, of those items in order to comply, um, to show something that's different but complementary. We sometimes can vary too. Um, so the question I would pose to the commission for this application, to be fair to him and the way we've reviewed other applications, has he varied one item in massing? And is the detailing and, and materials similar enough and is the varying and massing too much and i think that's what people are at getting towards in order to to be approvable well what you also get to brent when you start talking about looking at massing and looking at, at building heights is the the general the general guidance really the rule um that it should not be any higher than and you know kind of higher higher than the lowest and lowest than lower than the highest Right. So the average of the of the of the two. That's right. Yeah, I, I don't and I don't have a I don't necessarily have a feeling at this point for how high this drawing is showing this building being compared to what we're looking at. My sense is that it would be equivalent or close to equivalent to putting a um, you know, putting a gable roof on top of the structure that that on top of Mark's garage, assuming that's Mark's garage, which is going to make it massively tall, and and its massing is going to therefore be pretty extraordinary. So I think to to help the applicant, I mean, I think seeing seeing that that alley scape is going to help us really judge that better, right? Than we are able to do right now. Yeah. Uh, and, 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 and so what Jay was referring to, there is also another requirement in the guidelines, a requirement, a guidance in the guidelines that ask that your structure be somewhere between uh, the average, around the average of the highest structure adjacent and the, the lowest structure adjacent, right? And so that you're, I, I get that. Yeah, so. May I ask who Mark is? Mark, which I, one is Mark, which one is Mark's garage? No, we think he, we we're, we believe he's the architect for the flat roof garage that you're talking about. Oh, okay. We're just using that as a shorthand way of referring to that building as Mark's building. <laughs> okay. So one other option. Um, so I think the reaction that I have to the elevation um, is the fact that the, it's the gable end, which just exaggerates the height. And I know on a lot of two-story garage carriage houses, that gable end is flipped. So you're not getting the full mass of the gable end. Your 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 roof is rotated, so you're seeing the slope of the roof. That is one way that we've got around the massiveness of a second floor area. Why don't we just, <clears throat> having heard your comments, all of which I appreciate, um, why don't we just redesign this thing and come back to you? Sounds good. We, we don't want to waste any more of your time and discussing something that's a hurdle. Why don't we? Uh, why don't we find a comp not necessarily a compromise, but something that everybody feels comfortable with? And ultimately, that's what it comes down to. Sure. 
Yeah, I think you've heard our comment. You kind of understand where we're all coming from, Absolutely. the perspective, and understand the the additional information we would need to see to help us make a decision. And that's the point of a conceptual review. So. so All right. Anything else you want from us? I don't think so. I appreciate your time and your input. And we'll be back to you. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you All right. Uh, moving on to the last application, uh, item 22 GV 21 05 046 710 714 South 5th Street. Uh, Ms. Bullock. Ms. Bullock. Yes, I'm here. There we go. Uh, please raise your right hand. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. I do. And please state your name for the record. Uh, Juliet Bullock, architect. I believe the client might be on here as well, unless they got tired. <laughs> so. We have the client. Steve Gifford there. He's listed. Mr. Gifford, if you'd like to speak, if you can unmute yourself so we can swear you in. Uh, do you got your camera turned on? The whole family's here. Sorry. There we go. If you'd, uh, if anybody's going to speak, please raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and the truth? I do. I do. And please state your names to the record. Carolyn Gifford. Steve Gifford. All righty. Jacqueline. Okay. This conceptual application is proposing exterior alterations and new construction. The applicant would like to convert the existing duplex to a single family residence, construct a new detached garage, add a new porch or small addition at the rear, and the exterior alterations would include new front doors, a repair of the eaves fascia like for like, and miscellaneous interior remodeling. So at the April business meeting, the commission asked that the applicant uh, ask building and zoning for preliminary feedback regarding any variances that may be needed. All righty. Applicant, have anything else to add? Uh, we do not need any variances. You're you're permitted. Actually, we're we're not into the setback, and we're permitted to add fifty percent of the living area of a non-conforming structure. Uh, we're fine on our rear yard. We're fine on our um, uh, garage, and we're fine on we're well below the fifty percent lot coverage as well. It's a pretty big lot. Okay. Questions, comments from the commission on what's before, before us. My comment is the demolition of the back wall is too extensive of uh, historic fabric. You're knocking out the whole back wall of the house. It's, it's actually about maybe two thirds of it. There's quite a large section that we're maintaining. Actually, Julie, I'm looking at maybe five feet. The whole rest of the back wall is gone. There it is. I can tell you the exact dimension. Well, it's still too much. Yeah, I, I understand. You know, guidelines say use existing openings to get into additions. Yeah, way too much. So it's. Uh, any thoughts on the garage? It's pretty, pretty simple design of garage. Just to clarify, it's, um, we're removing about 17 feet out of a 29 foot wall. Way too much, Julie. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. It's the living room. Okay. Yes. It's there. Yeah, staff can go to page 13. There you go. Yes. Any comments on the architecture exterior? Hearing none. 
Could I get some other comments on the extent of removal of the interior wall? From the other commissioners? exterior wall, I'm sorry. It's exterior. Yeah, well, which is now an interior wall. <laughs> um, I'm in Ned's boat. I, I'm not a big fan of. Part, part of renovating traditions on structures is. Historic preservation, you should always be able to take off. Whatever you put on that, that's that's the goal and, and we understand that there's been. It hasn't always happened in the past, but I'm, I'm in Ned's camp. I, I don't like tearing off an entire back. I, I can't deal with it anymore. And and I think it's a masonry building, so it's even more. Cringy. Mm -hmm. If I could ask that is an addition to the original cottage. It is an addition, mm -hmm. but it's historic. Yeah, I'm just a little surprised because I've not had that comment before. <laughs> and I've done larger removals, so that's fine I, for and, clarification. And, that, and Julie, that's why I'm where that's why I'm here now. Okay, so I, no, I, just, I yeah. do not support this anymore. Okay, I've seen the back whole back ends of historic cottages blown out the back to put an addition on, and that is so wrong because it can't be restored. Okay. <laughs> Brett, what's your Oh, I just have a weird question. Like, okay. if they built this and they didn't do that, would we have any authority to keep them from doing it once it's inside? No. Right. So I, I disagree, Jay. I'm just asking the question. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Once it's interior space, it's interior space and it's outside of our purview. That's true. Um, but yeah, we, I, I think there's recourse now. I. I, I think actually, you know, I'm just gonna say we could submit a, a plan revision. We would not be required to get a COA. Um, and it it would not go back through German village. But I also understand your intent to keep more of the historic structure, but he he, he is correct that it's not really enforceable, unfortunately. That that's my concern. I mean, that's just mm -hmm. I'm trying to understand that. We, we basically, I don't necessarily disagree with your principle, Ned, but I'm just yeah. trying to understand. But my question would be then, Julie, I will ask you if your intent under oath is to take that wall down after the building's built. Mm -hmm. I would I would say that that. Go ahead. I. I would say that that's an inappropriate question and I, I'm not going to, uh, you know, clearly not Jay, her it's, lawyer, it's actually nor not, anybody's lawyer. Jay, it's actually think, not. It's a, it is appropriate to ask an applicant. Are you aware of anything in this that we have not talked? That's not in compliance with the guidelines. I would yes. argue that that I would argue that that's not not in compliance with the guidelines because once it's interior space, it's outside of our purview. But demolition demolition is not going into it. Demolition is not. How much damage are you doing to the historic fabric to put this addition on? That's the question. And that I, is our purview. Ned, I, I, I don't agree with, or I don't disagree, first of all, I think that's the way it should be. I think we should have some some degree of control over the interior and, and especially interior structures. But the reality is, I don't think we do. I don't think we've but ever exercised. You can, you, can ask, you can ask that question, how much demolition are you going to do to put this addition on? And the answer is this. And then when they don't comply with it, they have not, they have they have put their license under threat. I will put it that way. I think but, that I mean I'm not doing the demolition <laughs> by any well, stretch. I, 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 I think are, to your you point, are, Julie. Julie, you, know, you are doing the drawings and getting the permit, are you not? Sure. But I'm just gonna tell you, Ben, or Ned, sorry, I can't tell you how many times that I've gone out to a job site four or five months later, and this is no excuse, and I agree with you, but that the builder or and or the owner has made changes that I'm not aware of at all. And it, it does happen a lot, especially on the inside of houses. So then let me ask you this. Have you gone call. to the building department and gotten the permit modified? Well, a lot of times I never even know about it. That that's that, that's I'm, an excuse, Julie. You're supposed to go to the building department and notify, make those permit revisions. If the client does not want to pay me to come out and inspect the site and see the construction was done, I have, would have no way of being able to certify whether changes had been made or not. Yes, it is the responsibility of the builder and or the owner to contact me if yes, they've 
And it, it's also the responsibility of the building department to contact me and say, hey, did you sign off on this change? But well, I, I agree. Tell you, it, it doesn't happen a lot. Could, could, <laughs> could we, it's I don't could agree we, with this. Time out, time out, time out. I, I think this argument needs to yeah. be taken yeah. back to the city and getting exactly. our, our legal review. I don't think yeah. we need to hash it out here on the call. Sure. I agree 100%, Anthony. That's exactly what I was going to say. I'd love to get the city's perspective on where where that line is drawn so that we can operate clearly and so that the applicant knows um, yeah. where our authority lies and where it doesn't. Yeah. And it would be helpful can... to have a clarification for sure. But I figure that out. This question on this was the roof lines. And I was hoping to get some feedback on that because it was a little difficult for me to figure out how to put an addition on this. And I don't know if you could go to the exterior elevation page. That's what I was really hoping to get feedback on. And we can, I'll certainly talk to the owner about maintaining more of the existing interior wall and, and see if we can come up with another scenario. I'm not sure yet, you know, it's, um, there's some elevations. I, they're in there somewhere. Yeah, you've made it smaller than the original structure or lower than the original structure. Yeah, right? yeah. Well, I, so I did a gable. Yes, but see, there's a, like a low sloped roof in between, and I just want to make sure that that we're okay with this massing because, you know, I went back and forth on it. Should I turn the gable? It just made it too important if I turned the gable on the south elevation to face me. So I faced it towards the back. And the other thing I liked about this orientation is when you're standing in the front. And then another reason I did it this way, when you're standing in the front of the building, you do not see the addition. Oh, and if I turned the gable, you were going to see it. Because my first thought was, oh, I, I need to turn this 90 degrees. But I went with, let's keep it hidden behind the main massing of the house from the street so that it can you know, come out past it. So, Julie, so I think it's fine. Okay, good. I, I, I like the fact you respected the roof, the flat roof. This is on the back. Does it read like an addition? Boy, does it read like an addition. Yeah. 100%. And and, okay. and you made the the pitch lower than the pitch of the main structure, yeah. and then the jumping off point lower than the flat roof. It yeah. all makes and sense. And you match the pitch, so yeah, okay. for me it's fine. Okay, great. Okay, all right. I like it as well. I just have a question on the uh, second floor plan. The roof plan is a shape <laughs> on the back. I'm just wondering what what that was. Yeah. That oh, guy. you know that's that was for the building department. They want to see the height. It's like a section. It's no, just, no, I, no, I, no, I, no, I should have cut it off. The interior you know. scale. Yeah, this house is very oddly configured on the second floor in that the first floor is side to side with the duplex and the second floor is front to back. Yeah. Julie, all the doubles are like that. Oh, where are they? I haven't run into uh, them. Um, are like that, yeah. 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 The, Dutch, the Dutch doubles are like that. The German doubles are not. Yeah. Okay, I must have been doing German doubles. You, yeah, you must have been doing <laughs> German doubles. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. So we'll we'll go back and rethink the spaces and see what we can come up with in terms of um, a layout that respects more of the exterior wall. Um, I would, I would uh, appreciate that. Yeah, I'll talk since, to the client about that. Since we yeah. have since we have the audience, Julie. I'm sorry to interrupt, but mm -hmm. what is the what is the maximum that we could take out of that back wall? Because we it, it could be revised to leave part of that back wall. Mm -hmm. So the so the I'll put it this way. There, there's the school of thought and the preservation mantra is that whatever you put on as an addition, whatever changes you make should be undoable. We should be able to reverse it. So if we put an addition on, in theory, we should, be, we should be able to take it off and have the building back to its original condition. That's the preservation mantra. Um, the, the semantics that the argument is happening now is do we have any recourse once it becomes interior space? And I'm not going to debate that. That's for another day. Uh, that <laughs> perfect scenario, you, you use the doors that are there as the entrances to the new space. Um, maybe you, you, you do some changes with a window or something like that. That would be the perfect world scenario. And I'm not going to debate that <laughs> today. Yeah, I'm not sure that always needs to be strictly adhered to, but certainly, in my opinion, less demolition than what you're doing. And there could be a happy medium in between where we understand there's space. You need to get usable space out of it. So opening up something could be could be in play. That's that's the I'll say the philosophical debate that was happening earlier. Okay. But there's no hard and fast number of what's good and what's not. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. Thank you. Now do we get the one week grace period to submit next week, week from tomorrow? Jacqueline? <laughs> You're muted. 
Uh, I mean, typically we do that for continued applications. I'm sure. Uh, yeah, I can double check. We can figure it out for the conceptual. Because we would love to get this all revised and get. I'd love to get just. I'm gonna, you know, take a risk and get final drawings into you, if I can get them. In. I, they're just their contractors ready to go. So. Yeah, if you got a contractor right now, use them. Yeah, that's the problem. <laughs> It's only going to go up. Yeah, they're not available. <laughs> they aren't so. All right, Julie, any, anything else you need from us? I don't think so. I appreciate the feedback and you know, okay. definitely. I understand Ned where you're coming from, so I appreciate that. So I, and I appreciate you. that, Julie. Thank you. Thank you. All right. It's good when you spark that debate. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's something that definitely needs to be clarified. I think absolutely. Yeah, because I think people do take advantage. Okay. Leave it at that. <laughs> All the time. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Jacqueline, is there, I don't think there's anything else all business wise down below. Nope. We are, I think, all bet all set. Okay. Uh, to uh, uh, real quick, before, before we adjourn, uh, Jacqueline, if a request for you, if you can reach out to uh, legal, make sure we can get some input on that aspect. Uh, and then for the commissioners, um, it's a uh, uh, caretaker award season. So I put out three proposal properties looking for a third. If you got any ideas, send them my way. I'd like to get that wrapped up here soon. Uh, I heard a motion to adjourn previously, so I'll bring that back up. Is there a second? <laughs> second. Any questions on the motion? Uh, barring any uh, disagreement there? And motion passes. Later. Thank you all. Great to see you all. Thank you very much. Bye-bye, everyone. Everybody have a good month.